home season for the Washington Huskies begins today at Husky Stadium as the Big Ten comes to town. Ohio State, one of the co-champions last year, takes on the Washington Huskies. Hello again, everybody. Don Poyer with my pal Sonny Six Killer. Good to be home, isn't it? Oh, it's great to be here, Don. This guy's had butterflies all week, and he's really got them right now. You're concerned as far as the Huskies, Damon Ewer, the quarterback's got to bounce back from that SC loss. Well, we have to put that bad game behind him last last week against SC and bounce back against the Ohio State Buckeyes because it's going to be a great game for him, a good test in front of the hometown crowd. A lot of his problems took place when he was uh, after he was injured took the shot in the ribs had the three interceptions etc cetera, etc cetera. but we'll see if he bounces back Joey Galloway the entire hemisphere knows he's not playing for Ohio State today but you think they might miss him more on special teams well you know he's a third of their offense last year in 93 Don but the biggest thing here in a tight game a big game against the Huskies on national TV is the special teams play often decides the ball game and I think Galloway will be missed a lot more than the Napoleon Coppins on the other side yeah and we'll see if uh, they can stop the running game of Ohio said if they do could be a long day for Ohio State we shall see kickoff it's here let's get to it we'll be right back with that in just a moment The coin toss has taken place between the Buckeyes and the Huskies. Washington winning the toss, the first one at home in the 95 season. They have deferred, and they are going with the win. And somebody watching very closely, Brock Heward of Puyallup High School. Yes, younger son or younger brother of Damon Heward. And I'm sure the family would love to see him wear purple and gold with the Huskies, too. But he's got a lot of schools talking to young Brock. He's on the Husky sideline. His dad, of course, the head coach at Puyallup, Mike Hewer. And Damon, who played very well in spots against USC, had a couple of mishaps and is open to bounce back now. I'll tell you, he showed me a lot of courage against SC in that charge for the goal line that one particular time. Lawyer Malloy and the Huskies, they will be kicking off. They are taking what wind there is right now, swirling a bit. Jim Lambright with some 17 linebackers who played under him over his 25 years as an assistant 24 as an assistant went on to the NFL as is the tradition helmets are up as the Huskies will kick off in their home opener one note Inc. Aliaga been injured most of the week with a hamstring will not be starting it looks like at a linebacker rather it will be John Fiala the sophomore out of Bellevue and Lake Washington High School and we will see him very shortly. John Wales will be kicking off John who did an excellent job last week. Demetrius Stanley and Sean Springs are going to be the people back for Ohio State. We mentioned that early because normally Joey Galloway would be the man back there. But because of the suspension by the NCAA, he misses this game. He misses their next game against Pittsburgh. Along with Sonny Six Killer, I'm Don Poyer. Welcome to the home opener here in Husky Stadium in Prime Sports Northwest. Wales, who had a terrific spring. And an even better fall will kick to these two men, Sean Springs on the left, the son of Ron Springs, who was a very good tailback for Ohio State back in the mid-70s, 76 through 78. The weather has cooperated. Wales will kick off from the left hash mark. Springs and the other man, number three, Demetrius Stanley, now switch on the other end. See if Wales tries to pin him on the sidelines. They keep it to the left side of the field. Stanley from the three to the 10. And now hard at the 13. We got a flag down. That was a big time hit there, Don. That might have been Terry Holloman, number six. I believe he was the man. The converted tailback to a linebacker. And the penalty on Ohio State. He had a couple of great hits last week as well. Bobby Hoying will be the man leading the charge for the Ohio State Buckeyes. 
Had a career game, still not that many yards against Fresno State as you see Eddie George and the rest of the people in the backfield. The receivers, Buster Tillman and Chris Sanders trying to take up the slack for Joey Galloway and DJ Jones is the tight end. They don't go to the tight end very much. Big people up front, true freshman Orlando Pace at the left tackle. And Corey Stringer can't say left tackle. Well, actually, they will flip flop on occasion. First and ten, ball on the eight yard line after the penalty. And they go to Eddie George right off the bat and right up the belly for 12 yards. And a first down is stopped by Reggie Reeser. Up front, Steve Hoffman, who just saw George go by him, along with David Ritchie, actually not playing. It'll be Iwaliko starting because of Ritchie's injuries. Devers and then the linebacker core. Aliaga not playing as well. And the veteran secondary, which had to make the play on that particular case, Reggie Reese with the tackle. It's a first and ten from the 20 now for Ohio State. George again. Big hole again. And they're obviously attacking the inside as Richie Chambers makes the stop, but they're going right up the middle, Sonny. They've got a lot of beef up front, Don, and they're certainly going to do what they needed to do to come in this ballgame. That's established a running game with that big running back and move the Huskies back downfield. Look at the size of the freshman pace, number 75. 6'5, 320. That's a true freshman, not a redshirt <laughs> freshman. Unbelievably big. And the, and the All American is on the other side at 6'5, 315, number 78, Corey Stringer. He got five last time, Eddie George did. It's second down and five. The weight advantage is huge for the Buckeyes at this point. Play action. Pressure. They get it. Iwaliko and a host of defenders. John Fiala in there. Richie Chambers. Again, Don, that's a great job. The Husky defensive backfield's taken up where they did last week. Here you see Bobby Hoeing on a little play action, coming back, a little sprint dry action. He's looking downfield, but I tell you, those receivers are absolutely covered. Chambers the first to get there as the linebacker who has improved immensely over 93 and this year is becoming quite an outside linebacker third down and 12 with the sack first of the day after six last week pressure coming he's going deep however and has a man but is overthrown intended receiver was Chris Sanders so the Buckeyes will have to punt. Sanders had his man beat, Sonny. Well, Chris Sanders is a very fine athlete. You know, you know, Joey Galloway you can't replace that kind of guy. But Chris Sanders, the 6'1", 175, track star, a great long jumper. So he does have the speed to get deep. And he has some experience, too, as a second-year starter. So just under 13 minutes, the Huskies hold. The punter is Scott Turner. Turner, rather. And you know him. <laughs> Hoffman back to return. He'll be on punts and kickoff returns today. Low wobbly punt. He won't have a chance. Stays no out of bounds. Okay. It'll be at about the 41 yard line for Washington and these gentlemen. Ewan at quarterback, Richard Thomas, big, tough, hardest hitting Husky, as voted upon by the players, by the way. And the receivers on the outside, and Mr. Bruder, the All American in the middle. And the people up front, anchored by the center, Frank Garcia, Andrew Peterson, one of the married players on this team, along with Trevor, Pat Kessie, and Eric Battle. For the Washington Huskies, there's Steve Hoffman doing a good job defensively. It's first and 10 on the 41 yard line of Washington. And they go to Richard Thomas, the fullback, first down. Good for about three yards. The people trying to stop the Huskies, not a lot of experience. About 50% of the people up front are starters. Brown returns. He goes to defensive tackle, replacing Big Daddy. You remember him, Wilkinson. Styles, the all Big Ten middle linebacker. Kerner is the only returner as a starter in this secondary for Ohio State. Gain of only two yards. It's second down and eight for Washington. Tight end goes to the right side. Here's Kaufman, first time, and he is buried immediately. One of the first in there was Matt Bonehouse, a backup to Randall Brown at the defensive line, a senior at 285. Remember, Kaufman had only 51 yards against these Buckeyes last year. Total, Don, I think we only had 85 yards as a team. 
93. Did not score a touchdown against the Buckeyes either last year. Ever since then, he has scored at least one in every game. Fred Coleman comes out as an extra wide receiver to the left side. Good pressure, then lay it off. Here's Kaufman in the open field. Gets a couple of blocks, but he's brought down. Just gets the first down by one yard. As Merlin Kerner and the linebacker Greg Belisari make the stop. Got it by one, son. Yeah, that's, that's all you need. You need one inch or one yard, and you got it. Here's a great job by Damon. He's stepping back. This is what I like to see him do. Step up in that pocket. Saw the open receiver, Napoleon, which is probably his third receiver at that time. Nice block by Freddie Coleman, the redshirt freshman, as Napoleon comes off that big day of 152 yards against the Trojans of USC. First and 10 for Washington. Both teams now with one first down from the 48 of Ohio State. Looking outside, Kaufman. Had a step on the linebacker going against the man he really admires was Craig Powell, number 84. He says, 84 was all over me last year. <laughs> For good reason. 4-4 four, four speed can stay with anybody. <laughs> That's right. How many linebackers run a 4-4-40? Four, four, he says, I couldn't get outside. I couldn't get away from him. <laughs> So for the Huskies second down and 10 from the Buckeye 48 yard line here in the first quarter with 11 minutes remaining. They send Janowski wide to the right in motion. Kaufman in the backfield and Bjornsson split to the left side. Tight end Bruner. Boy he had a lot of room and he ran right for the Buckeye. Well he went right after their big star Lorenzo Styles number 90. And that's like one way to avoid a big hit by him is to take him on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Meet him more than halfway. Yeah, huh, yeah if you're going to get a hit, you might as well hit them first. Yeah, he had a lot of green to his right, and uh, he went to the left. This is a good job by Damon. You know, he's looking right straight down the field. He's waiting for Bruner just to break open. Kind of a delay route. Wide open. And here comes the big hit. Good job by Mark. I think the All-American tight end will win that one. Had four catches last week against Southern Cal. Short of the first. It's third and one. Kaufman. It'll be close. Sonny says he's got it. I say he's got it. That, that just shows the strength of Napoleon Kaufman right there. Hit approximately on the line of scrimmage and be able to use his strength to take the man to the first down. <laughs> Guess who met him again? Yeah. <laughs> Greg Powell, number 84. They're going to see a lot of each other, Don. I think so, too. He was. A man who not only chased Kaufman, but also beat O'Brien. In, in fact, that's where he really made a name for himself last year as he got the angle and ran down Bean O'Brien last year against Washington and Columbus. By a nose. You've got a, you've got a good eye for the football, my friend. <laughs> Two first downs for the Washington Huskies. They have 18 yards passing, three rushing so far. One belonging to Kaufman and a couple belonging to Richard Thomas. First possession for the Washington Huskies. Trailing this series overall, five games to two and three to one to Ohio State here in Seattle. Y'all remember the 86 game, 40 to 7, Washington. That was a play. Checking out the play, first and 10 from the 38. Up the middle, slices to the right side. He's gone. Boom. He's gone. Goodbye, Kaufman. Touchdown, Washington. <laughs> 38 yards. <laughs> And the coaches are congratulating Damon Hewitt on the sidelines because of the call that he made, clearly, Sonny. He had to check off at the line of scrimmage. You can see him here. He may not be able to detect it, but he is changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He saw something on the line. They kicked out on the down line, and the defensive tackle left a gaping hole for Napoleon, and the rest is Napoleon. All speed. 38 yards. John Wales to kick the extra point. Got a whistle and the flag. Whew, that's speed. <laughs> As we watch Tremendous Mr. Kaufman. job. 
Huskies taking too long, as Gordon Reese calls it, the referee. Jim Lambright's team will back it up five. That's the 11th straight game now that Kaufman has scored a touchdown since the Ohio State game last year. So now they will kick off, or rather kick the extra point from the 15. And it is good. So the Huskies, led by quarterback Damon Hewitt, take a 7-0 lead with 9.42 remaining here in the first quarter. Napoleon Kaufman, as we said earlier, he's scoring a touchdown in his 11th straight game. And we haven't even played nine minutes yet here. He got into the nine minute mark. 308 in the drive itself, the 38 yard run. And Washington had a whopping three yards rushing until a jump by Nip, number eight, sitting next to Mark Bruner. And Patrick Kessel. No him anywhere. Hey, he's, a, he's a smart running back, sitting next to his offensive lineman. That's right. Again, Jim Lambright is going to have his kicker, John Wales, kick from the left hash mark. Ooh, onside. Got it. That's Husky ball. Oh, my. Oh, on national television, they roll the dice, and they get it. Oh, thunderous ovation by the players down there. Tony Parrish with a recovery. And a beautiful kick by Wales. <laughs> That's a great job by that John Wales. A tremendous kick. He kicked it right where he had to. Great surprise. Now you know why? Did you see the collapsing? By number 94 of the Buckeyes. Mike Grable, the defensive end. They must have seen that in the film, Sonny, where Absolutely. they try to collapse it. Forming the wall for the return man. First and ten from the 48 of Washington. We got a penalty. As Kaufman is stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Valisari, the outside linebacker. No gain before the penalty. No gain at all, and let's see what the penalty is. Oh, it's going against the Buckeyes. That's not making Coach Cooper too happy right now. You give up. Lack of uh, staying on top of it on that kick return team, you know, just running with the ball, not even paying attention, and now they jump off sides. Coaches do not like that. Wake up call. They That's came it. out to uh, Tucson on Thursday and worked out here on Thursday as well as Friday. Tony Parrish, the man who came up with it. Boy, that's that's an exciting call. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, when it's non-conference, you're on probation. Hey, what the heck? Might as well go for it. The already quarterback is Janowski. Now comes out to the left side on first and five at the Buckeye 47. Kaufman, and they come down from behind, and I'll bet it was. No, this time it was number 92, Matt Finkes, the outside defensive end, rather than Powell, and he loses one. Clearly, everything is keying on Kaufman right now. And as Napoleon said, I'm going to see a lot of eight man fronts until. We can either pass the ball enough to where they've got to soften up. So it's a loss of one, second down and six from the Ohio State 48. Two wideouts to the left side. And again, a checkoff by Hewitt. Here comes. Saw the blitz. Bjornsson! Incomplete. Kerner defending the only returning starter of that secondary. Nice call by Hewitt. He saw it coming. Here is the onside once again. They were clearly out of position on that kickoff return, Don. You can see they're already going back, as you mentioned, to go back and set up the wall. The outside people did not do what they were supposed to, obviously. Mike Vrabel, the defensive end, caught going left when he needed to be going right. 
Third down and six. After the blitz by Powell, the linebacker. Get a flag. Don't see it. Here comes the screen. No way. Ohio State showing great speed, and again it is Craig Powell, the weak side linebacker, who came up on the screen. No flag. Evidently the Buckeye got back before the snap. I think it's really tough to throw a screen in there when you have a guy like Craig Powell who's four four in the 40 yard four dash down. can react very quickly as he did on that play. I might want to run that screen to the other side. Four this man did four very four well four in his debut four as Oski. His first punt was 50 yards and he averaged 46. And he will punt to Sean Springs number 24 a very exciting young redshirt Sean freshman. Low wobbly punt and a fair catch called by Springs at the 16 yard line. Let's take a time out here at Husky Stadium 747 remaining in the first quarter. Still seven zip after the uh, onside kick by actually a pooch kick is more appropriate to call that rather than an onside by the Huskies unable to score points on that particular play. Incidentally the Heisman trophy is on display here at Washington this weekend making the trip around the country to various schools where there are legitimate candidates first and ten for Ohio State after the thirty four yard punt. Inside. Steve Hoffman in there to close down in a hurry as Eddie George was the ball carrier. They'll give him one yard. He's a big guy, not only Hoffman, but Eddie George at 6'3, 230 pounds. As Jim Lambright suffered his first loss as a head coach to John Cooper and the Buckeyes back in Columbus in game two of the 93 season. John Fiala playing instead of Ink Aliaga because of that injured hamstring. Second down and nine. George again trying to get outside. Oh, he's strong. Fumbles the ball, but out of bounds. Lawyer Malloy with the hit and knocking it loose. Big time As hit by Lawyer Malloy there, Don. Hairston slowed him down, and so did Lyons. <laughs> and Malloy comes in for the kill. Here's a good block up front by Alex Rodriguez, that converted linebacker from last year. And there's the power. You know, you can't coach that kind of stuff. He's got the strength, but. Uh, Good pursuit by Laurie Malloy. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Chris Warren of the Seahawks. Big, Same size. Long. It doesn't look like he's going real fast, but he is. Very smooth runner. He was third string for a number of years. Now he's the man. Third down and three, and they'll go to him one more time. No way. Who is the Husky on the bottom that made the penetration? Hard to tell. Steve Hoffman. Was it Hoffman? You could see the, the gold pants. <laughs> That's two plays on this particular series where Steve Hoffman has used his speed to get inside their offensive left guard, number 72, Jamie Sumner, the JC transfer for Ohio State this year. Leon Neal is now going back to receive the punt rather than Kaufman as Turner prepares to punt. He had three, as you see, Neal, and he did the punting, punt returning chores against SC. There's the flag. Oh, yes. Leon Neal's going to say, What does it take? <laughs> Two weeks in a row, Don. Yeah. Fourth quarter, it happened against SC, but no penalty. This time, they get the flag, and it'll be on number 43. Ryan Miller, a deep outside linebacker, deep in the depth turret. You know, you're rushing downfield, you know, just a little bit for that Buckeye. Here comes Leon Neal. He's got his clear hand clearly up in the air, but the Ohio State Buckeye coming downfield, rushing hard. At times when you're running hard, you put your eyes down on the turf, and you may have missed him put his hand up in the air. 
It's still his fault. <laughs> 6 14 remaining will return in a moment. Seven nothing, just over six minutes to go. Forty eight of the Buckeye. Kaufman slicing. Great move. Oh, look at the move. Patillo had the angle and got him out of bounds at the 22 yard line. Oh, the explosion. Tim Patillo, the free safety, along with Preston Harrison, knocked him out of bounds. That's very similar to what you talked about. Come right at him and then go outside. Exactly. I think our offensive line can handle these guys if we go straight at him. Great blocking up front at the point of attack. And there, oh, Mr. Springs, welcome to big time football. <laughs> you know, and also I think that was some improvisation right about in there by Napoleon, too. The hole was there, and then he went to the outside where it was really open. First and ten. Washington now is 66 yards rushing from the 22 of the Buckeyes. A lot of time. Heward may just run. He's going to tuck it under and go out of bounds. Good coverage by Ohio State. Well, that's what Damon needs to do. Hey, nobody's open. Get what you can. Get out of bounds. Don't let don't let him get a free hit on you. Well, and and don't take a sack. Don't throw an interception. He did the right thing. Absolutely, great job. It's virtually back to the line of scrimmage, so it'll be second down and ten, just like an incomplete pass. <laughs> you see Damon <laughs> got the call from the sideline and turned left and nothing was in front of him but the ball <laughs> kind of forgot where the huddle was. <laughs> OK second down at 10 just under six minutes Cockman again's going to lead block if he can get around for that man he does Andrew Peterson in front of him down inside oh. the five yard line to the three if that isn't a Heisman candidate tell me what is and who <laughs> is. Tim Patillo, the free safety, knocks him OB. That is a great job by Andrew Peterson. You know, there's a guy that should make all Pac-10, possibly even some of the All-American squads. You can see it right here, Don. Here he is. He's pulling from the left side. Number 60. Great job there. Trevor Highfield looked like on the trap block. Look at Big Andrew down there. Napoleon loves Big Andrew. <laughs> Here's what he looks like. Tremendous at block you. by Trevor Highfield there on the on the defensive end coming across the line of scrimmage. Great job by the line. So it is first and goal from the three yard line for the Huskies. Leon Neal sidestep. Oh, what a job. It got down to the one yard line when he was hit at about the four. They make a lot of comparisons with Leon Neal. Not quite Napoleon Kaufman, but they are just like bookends. And you saw there the same strength. They're both equally strong. Lorenzo Styles, the honorable mention All American, middle linebacker with a stop. You notice he left that just short, so I bet Nip gets the ball in this time, Don. Maybe. <laughs> you know, I'd bring in Ted Stark and pitch it. <laughs> do the do the option. <laughs> and Kissel, an extra fullback in there. This time they give to Richard Thomas, and they call it a touchdown that he broke the play. So Richard Thomas comes up with the touchdown, and that is his first of the year, certainly. His fourth carry all season. They want to gain some more productivity out of that position. Good surge by the offensive line led by Frank Garcia up the middle. Richard Thomas. Well, I say he's clearly over the line, Don. <laughs> Going for two. And fail. Boy, Jim Lambright is pulling out everything from the top and bottom drawers. I'll tell you what, as a player, you enjoy that kind of thing, though, Don. They attempted the play to. Let's see it again. Well, here's here's the touchdown, and we'll try to get the replay for you of the two-point conversion attempt. 
The referee that called it is the one in the back of your screen. Well, his helmet pierced it, but I don't know where the ball is. That's a great break for the Huskies if he did not get across the plane, but you know, sometimes that'll happen in a football game. I still remember Charles White scoring the infamous touchdown in the Rose Bowl. Oh, remember that one? Called he, the touchdown. He the ball was something. back on the five. Yeah. <laughs> so a one yard dive by Richard Thomas. Going over the top. Good hit by those two backers of Ohio State, Lorenzo Styles, Greg Powell. Boy. Tell you one thing, Don, we've had some great camera work here today. We've had that from every angle. Great job. Richard, proud papa of his young daughter, now about a year old. And he's about one class away from graduating. Almost graduated in three years. Ooh, good kick. Stanley stays in the end zone. So it'll be first and ten from the 20 as Wales. Little adrenaline flow after being involved in that two-point attempt. As Washington failed on that particular attempt and lead 13 to nothing with still five Richard minutes to go. You a little surprised so far? Well, uh, Napoleon's not surprising me. I don't think he's surprising anybody unless you're on TV back in Ohio watching this game. That was a 48 yards by the Huskies. 48 yards, five plays. Crowd now applauding the defense as Hoyne comes up from the sideline. Total offense for Ohio State. 16 yards all through the air. Check it. All on the ground. None passing. Eddie George again up the middle. And that seems to be working best for them. They're saying fumble. Let's get the call from the referees. Sonny says it was down. Husky ball. Here's a good shot of it right here, Don. Chambers. Richie Chambers coming in pursuit, ripping the ball out. It's hard to tell exactly. It, it appeared to me it was already out of his arms. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gone right out. now. Yeah, see, there it is. Yes. It's out. That's a good call. Yep. John Fiala coming up with that ball. And Richie Chambers stripping him of the ball. Oh, Jim Lambright's coming up with those takeaways now. That's what he wanted after the SC games is one takeaway. That's not enough. They'll try to regroup there on the Buckeye yards sideline rather. And here's your story for productivity. First and ten. Play action going deep. Wide open. Yardson touchdown Washington. Tell me Ohio State didn't bite on that play action fake to Kaufman. <laughs> oh, they did. Here's a good shot of it right here. Damon's going back, a little pop action there, a little fake. Everybody's aware of the tight end coming down the middle. We had two receivers out in the corner out there, Don. And of course, Eric Bjornson with a big, a big target. What a perfect pass by Damon Yord and a good, good route by Eric. You could see both styles. And Powell, the two linebackers for Ohio State, take about three steps forward. Then, uh oh, <laughs> they could see it was going to be a forward pass. The yeah, timeout's been called, by the way, folks. He scored that against 46, Marlon Kerner, their only veteran defensive back, back in that backfield for the Buckeyes. And uh, Eric Bjornson, you got to give him a lot of credit getting open by that far. Oh, my goodness. Three touchdowns, two within 13 seconds of each other after the fumble. That was a turnover on Ohio State as a result a 25 yard pass to Eric Bjornsson. One play <laughs> and they come up now leading by the score of 19 to nothing with still five minutes to go here for Jim Lambright and his Huskies. A lot of people wondered what's going to happen with this program and this is a mighty good way to uh, show the fans when you're home in your opener. There's a good shot of Scott Linehan, the receivers coach, coming over from Idaho this year. 
I tell you, Coach Lambright is so proud of that guy. He thinks he's got a lot of potential. Obviously, he's worked well with our receivers so far, particularly in this game, and scored some touchdowns. Turnovers, and if you can turn them into points, you're going to win a lot of games. And the Huskies right now are doing just that. Two turnovers. Oh, well, excuse me, they're going for two. They have the one turnover here now on the fumble. So they will go for two again. They come to the left hash mark. Janowski wide to the right, Bjornsson left, and then Kaufman in the backfield. Throwing all the way. Run, and he can get it. No. He had an opening if he had not hesitated quite so long, but as a result, it will remain 19 to nothing. Washington with those five minutes left here in the first quarter. We have seen everything today. We have seen a pooch kick recovered by the Huskies, and we've seen the Huskies go for two on two occasions. <laughs> I love it. And a great play action to <laughs> Napoleon Coffin and the pass to Eric Bjornsson. That was the big difference. My the goodness. big difference is right there. Damon Hewitt off to a good start in this ball game, making some very smart decisions and putting the ball where he has to. Huskies have got to keep playing football, though. We're just getting started here. And it makes a difference when you don't have, you know, it could be 21 to nothing right now rather than 19. A lot of football ahead and the Huskies right now are trying to do a replay of the 1986 game when then Earl Bruce brought the Buckeyes in and walked away 40 to 7 Washington with a blowout in 86 Reggie Rogers and the Huskies had their way again kicking to the left side Sean Springs will take it on the three Up to the 20 and Russell down at the 29 yard line. There is a touchdown kid, Eric Bjornsson. Great job being 6'5, beating their best cover guy. That's a good afternoon for him. Like to see him catch a couple more. He's having a good year so far. Three receptions last week. He only had one reception all last year. Trying to play quarterback along with Damon Ewart. So here we go. 4.53 remaining here in the first quarter. Going at quarterback, first and 10 from their own 30. Eddie George in the backfield. Hoying not throwing much, and they've got to open it up now. They're going to call it complete as they go to Sanders. Yes. A completion to the 45 of Ohio State in a first down. Reggie Reeser there defending on top of Sanders, number 17. And Sonny talked about being such a good long jumper. 26 feet, nine and three quarter inches in the Big Ten track meet. So a first down for Ohio State. Two wide outs to the right side. Sanders and Hillman. Looking deep now to the right side. Complete up to the 48 and that is number 12 Tillman who is a backup normally to Chris Sanders. He's not really known for having a lot of great speed either Don. Last week he caught three for 50 yards, but really he's not the guy that they really want to go too deep. More of a possession kind of guy. Exactly. Watch Stringer. <laughs> That's a nice tackle, Corey. Way to, way to grab him, buddy. Look at that. My goodness, Hoffman almost in a half Nelson that time with the All-American. Well, that one will go to the old Pac-10 and Big Ten offices next week. <laughs> Second and four. Sanders in motion. Tailback George. Nothing doing. David Kilpatrick gets him at the line of scrimmage. David playing without Incaliaga, his normal sidekick. John Fiala instead, number 57 on the inside. We'll see on this replay where he does just a great job on the left hand side of the screen, coming up and taking on that fullback just like he's taught, taking on the block, chucking him, and making the tackle. Mano a mano, linebacker a linebacker. Those kind of plays will make your linebacker coaches happy. <laughs> and make your fullback think about it too. <laughs> Wait exactly. a minute. I gotta look out for 35. I gotta hit him a little harder. So it'll be third down and five. Two receivers right, and here comes Hoyne looking that way. Devers trying to put the pressure on. First down, Ohio State. Tillman with a reception, number 12. 
Simple route on the right side. One guy going straight, and the other guy breaking it off for the first down. There's nothing real, you know, you know, fancy about that one, Don. Lawyer Malloy, who had a terrific game against USC, was there defending. As Hoying is starting to move the ball now with a total of 29 passing yards with 20 yards on the ground, all of those from Eddie George. Cooper had to make a decision to throw the ball, and open up that running attack. They were getting nowhere running the football. First and ten, Sanders going in motion left, so it's a balanced attack. Looking left, now back right, complete to Tillman, who is good for a first down, down to the 30. Some nice play calling as the backup wide receiver gets another first for Bobby. And their short passing game is working well for, for them right now. That's one of the little things, the intangible things you hear about Buster Tillman. He doesn't possess the great speed, but he's always very precise in his routes. And there's an example of that on that time on Russell Harrison. Bobby only 6 of 21, 142 yards and an interception against the Huskies last year. Also had the one touchdown, a long one near the end of the half to Joey Galloway. George trying to get outside as they mix up the run with the pass. Down near the 25 yard line on first down. Russell Hairston coming up from the corner. Five yards, good first down play. Five yards too much, Don. Way too much on a first down. Now's the time the Husky defense has got to start asserting itself, be a little more aggressive. Let's start shooting somebody right through there. They need a big play, like a sack, interception, a takeaway, something. They started back on their own 30 yard line this particular drive second down and four. George in the backfield with one wide out here comes Eddie George again right up the middle with the lead blocker good first down or it's rather good for the first down on second down as he is stopped by Fiala eight yard play good block by the Buckeyes Jamie Sumner pulling around. Tight end DJ Jones also 89 getting down to throw a block. That big physical offensive line has it going in their direction right now with Pace at 320, Sumner at 290, the center Porter at 285, Daniels at guard 280, and Stringer at 315. First and 10 from the 17. George again met at the line of scrimmage. Richie Chambers, number 32 out of Lake Stevens, the senior with the tackle. He's the one that knocked Richie the ball loose the against stop. George earlier, and that turned into six points. Good job by Richie to put that helmet right where you want to. He drove uh, George back, actually, two or three yards. Eddie playing behind Butler Bonote. He was one of them last year as a tailback. And Raymond Harris, who had 102 yards against Washington last year. Gain of two, second down and eight from the 15 of Washington. Back up tight end in motion. Here comes the penetration. Didn't do it in time on the play action. Got a man wide open. The tight end. Fumble. Fumble. Washington ball. <laughs> Touchback. Washington ball on the 20. The receiver was DJ Jones and Lawyer Malloy with the hit on the tight end. <laughs> Reggie Reeser coming up with the fumble. Here's a great play action fake by Bobby Hoying. You can see the tight end wide open in the middle. One thing you got to do is put it away. Never had he may not have had uh, possession of that ball. No. That looked more like an incompletion to me. Yeah, he never did wrap it up. Here's another angle here, Don. Maybe we can see if that ball is floating around out there. Good play action there. Deke Devers bit on a little bit. Wide open tight end there in the middle. Even you could have completed this pass. <laughs> yep, I think I don't think he had control of it. Never did. Nice play, nevertheless, by Lawyer Malloy. So even he thinks it's incomplete and not a fumble. First and ten, Washington on the 20. Another takeaway. Kaufman breaks it big. Tries to get outside. Uh -oh. Flag goes down late and at the line of scrimmage. And the Buckeyes are clapping their hands. Frank Garcia is back there talking to him. Now he's not happy. Here again. Reggie doing the job getting the loose ball whether or not it was a fumble or not that's the question maybe not but here's, a, here's another angle here Don it looks like he's not quite got possession of the ball to me. 
That's an incomplete looking at that video anyway. You never want to second guess those men in stripes, Don. Holding on Washington. <laughs> and it may have been Frank Garcia. He was the one arguing the most. Well, certainly. the official threw it right at him, so I figured he was the guy. 25 seconds left in a very eventful first quarter here in Seattle. First and 10. Check it. It should be first and 20. Now. Yes. It's too bad he got that call. Nip was already way beyond the line of scrimmage by the time the flag came. On first and 20, setting it up to the tight end. As Bruner gets it up to the 19 yard line. And he's stopped by Craig Powell. It's about time we got Mark Bruner in the offense today. Good job. Good good idea to come back and pick up nine to ten yards on a key pass. Yeah, in fact, he's had a couple of receptions today. End of the first quarter. Ooh. And what a quarter. One quarter is in the books. As Washington comes up with three touchdowns. They go for two on the second touchdown. Fail. And then on the third touchdown, they try to go for two as well. And that was uh, non-successful as well. In the first 15 minutes, total yards for at one point, there were no passing yards for Ohio State until the last couple of minutes of the quarter. Now up to 57. Turnovers, though, it's much like our Ohio State or a Washington USC game last week. It's Ohio State suffering the turnovers, like Washington did last year, or rather last week. This is a good chance for the Huskies. Second 11. He's picked up nine, Don, starting the second quarter. It'd be nice to see us control the ball, get our stats back up in the second period. Second down and 11. Remember, there was a holding call on the previous play. Threw it across the middle to Kaufman. Now he's got room. Has the first down and much more to the 38 yard line. I don't think the linebackers, is, you know, as quick as Powell is, the rest of the defensive backfield linebackers do not realize how quick Napoleon Kaufman is. Here's a good job, exactly. Whatever that was drawn up there, he's just circling up out of the backfield. I mean, I, I knew where he was going, didn't That's you? That's right. <laughs> Great job right there. And then he's just going to turn it straight upfield. And that's what I like about Napoleon. He doesn't try to dance outside too much. If he can't, he'll just go straight ahead. He's so fast, he has bugs on his windshield. First and 10. Kaufman again going around the left side, short of the first down, but up to the 45. Knocked out of bounds by Sean Springs, the redshirt freshman. <laughs> bugs on the windshield. I love it. He's so fast, he's got bugs on his windshield. I wonder if he's got the little sprayers, you know, to clean it <laughs> yeah. up. Second down and two. As Kaufman stays on the sidelines, get a rest. Ball at the 46 of Washington and so far doing exactly what Sonny wanted them to do and that is a sustained drive. They bring Bjornsson and Janowski to the right side. Neal has the first down right to midfield. First down Washington. Four yard gain for the junior out of Long Beach. Kaufman with 91 yards rushing. 91 yards, Sonny. All right. <laughs> That's like your old numbers passing against like <laughs> Michigan State and some of those guys. What a great day for a ball game, Don. I love being up here looking at the boats. Sun shines out. Great day to have a good game. Takes you back, doesn't it? Sure does. First and 10 for Washington. And right at the 50 yard line. Balanced attack. They got two tight ends and a timeout is called by Hewitt. He was running out of time. Yeah. So we will follow that timeout, enjoy the sunshine, and enjoy the score. Here we go, first and 10 for Washington now on the 50 after the timeout called by Hewer. Same alignment with the balanced and room for Kaufman. Kaufman wrestled down at the Ohio State 39 by Tim Battillo, the free safety, but not until he gets a first down. Kaufman hurt. Took 
a shot in the eye maybe. That should give him unofficially over 100 yards already here in the ball game. He had 91 as of the timeout. There it is, 102 now. Good start off to a good day. That's Heisman. Uh, those are Heisman-like numbers. Leon Neal back into the game for Kaufman. First and ten, just inside the 40. Little naked bootleg. Better hurry. Lay it down. That's okay. And getting him, number 94, Mike Vrabel. And the eye might be bothering Napoleon again. That's actually that's the other eye. That's not the one that was hurt originally. I tell you what, last week he got punched in the nose. Some these people that are tackling him are trying to get underneath that screen he's running. Two weeks in a row now, somebody's gotten up there. Second down and 18 as a result of the sack by Frable, the defensive end of Ohio State. Good speed guy. He's supposed to be a good speed rusher, and he's showed her on that last play. On second down. Did he inter no, incomplete. No interception. And that again was Vrabel, number 94, who has his own little individual battle going with Kaufman with uh, Hewer. I was looking downfield and I saw Drake Balasari was all over Mark Bruner. He had jersey, pads, everything. Well, Washington can't complain too much to this point anyway in terms of getting breaks. So it'll be third down and 18. Nowhere near field goal range as Kaufman looks to be all right. Gordon wide right and Janowski to the left. Four man rush going deep. Almost a one hander by Janowski. Check yes. Mr. Janowski, Dave out of Corona, California. Sean Springs, they tested the redshirt freshman. That was still an excellent pass by Damon Heward. It's a tough pass to complete, but what you're trying to do, it's a long ways, 18 yards. Maybe you should have thrown the ball to try and get field goal range. But here you see the ball coming down. Seems like everything to Janoski is about an arm length away, two weeks in a row. And if anybody can catch it, it's Janoski. Sean Springs back to receive the punt. Prince the punter, he's struggling today. Got a wobbly one to the right. Ooh, Husky bounce. Oh my. Oh my. Down on the one. Covering was Terry Holloman, number six. And I'll tell you, when he put his left foot in the end zone, I didn't know if he'd get away with it or not. They put it inside the one yard line. Mr. Prince got a lucky bounce. I thought he was going to let it go a little bit too far there, Don. Here it is right here. Watch his left foot. It looks like both feet were set in inbounds and then whoa maybe not it was hard to tell from the shadow. Now his left foot went into the end zone. <laughs> I think John Cooper's arguing the point right now. He's got a legitimate argument on that one. We'll be back in just a moment time out. Look at it again as Terry Holloman covers the left foot. Oops. And the referee's looking right at him. He's right on top of it. And John has a legitimate gripe. John Cooper. Well, that's two. As far as the touchdown by Richard Thomas, where it was close if he broke the plane. Let's see if we can listen to John. Thomas or the Huskies would have eventually scored that touchdown but they got the breakdown here on the supposed fumble in the end zone by DJ Jones and now this one Ooh. big breaks first and ten inside their own one Hoying still a quarterback as Sanders goes in motion and I would imagine they'll try to oh he's going to roll out fumble incomplete Great job by Russell Harrison. Come up, pull those arms away. Don't let him get a good grasp on the ball in order to put it away. Buster Tillman, the intended receiver for Hoying. Bobby finished the season last year, completing 54% of his passes. As John Cooper is dealing 
without his full deck, meaning Joey Galloway, not here. That was quite a story. Taking $200 from a financial advisor, thinking he'd go pro, and then never returned it. I wondered who told on him. <laughs> Somebody from Michigan, probably. <laughs> yeah. Second and ten, as Sanders again goes in motion. Power eye with George. It's up to maybe the three yard line. As a host of Buckeyes were there, uh, Huskies were there. Call it a two yard game. John Cooper was here. If my memory serves me right, was at 87 when he came in, as I mentioned earlier, and his team got clobbered as the ASU Sun Devils met the Huskies. Now, this is the down and distance Coach Lambright talked about last. Here's another shot of the. Terry Holloman waiting a little bit too long. You know, in college football, just like a reception on the sidelines, you only have to have one foot and possession. Okay, maybe that's it then. Maybe we're the ones confused. <laughs> Third and seven going for everything. No way. Don't tell me this team lacks speed, though. Sanders had the secondary beat. Well, he's the guy you got to go to if you're going to throw it deep, being the track star. So it's fourth down, and now's where it gets interesting. Do you rush or do you return? Turner, who is a veteran, he's a senior, the punter, as Hoying comes to the sidelines. His punts so far today, 41 and 40 yards. He's consistent. But he doesn't have near the time, and guess who's back there waiting for his punt? With a clean windshield. The other thing, Don, too, is on the, the punter's got normally 15 yards from where the ball is snapped. Here, the end zone's 10 yards deep. He's got three yards. He's short two yards. And he has to step up a yard because he doesn't want to step back out of bounds. It's going to be a quick kick. Rasheen Sheehy, one of the quickest folks on this team, wide to the right side, coming in for the Huskies on the rush. Good protection. Very short punt. Let's see what Kaufman does with it from the 43. Dodges one Buckeye. Oh, still picks up about seven, eight yards down to the 31 yard line. Call it a 10 yard return. And he paid the price at the end. Alex Rodriguez gave him a big shot at the end of the play. 11 24 remaining here in the second quarter. All the scoring in the first 15 minutes so far. First and 10 from the 32. Huskies with a great opportunity here to score. But they won't do it this time. And as guess who? Mike Vrabel again, the defensive end, trips up Napoleon Kaufman. Vrabel and Hewitt have had a close relationship all day. Tripped up Vrabel's a very good defensive player in his own right, and our tight ends are trying to do the job they best job they can on him. He has so much speed, they use him on kickoff, return and kickoff coverage teams. They like his size. He has so much speed. He's the one that Second allowed us to get that pooch kick in, Don. <laughs> That's right. He ran with great zeal and zest and uh, speed out of the area he was supposed to be in to recover the ball. Anyway. Second down and eight. Hoffman to throw. Tight end, Bruner. No. And as you would say, Sonny, one of those tough, tough passes to throw and to catch as they're going directly away from the quarterback. You know, you, you work on those in practice, but it's not like having the other team rushing you. You can hear them snorting and grunting and everything else trying to get to you. So you have a tendency to get rid of the ball a little quicker. Belisarius stayed very close to tight end Mark Bruner, as you pointed out, Sonny. Quarterback so far today. The big touchdown to Heward, or from Heward to Eric Bjornsson, a 25 yarder back in the first quarter. A big difference there. Third down and eight. Ball right on the Buckeye 30. Right there. That's the middle of They saw him coming this time, however. That's as closing in quickly was Lorenzo Styles, the, the middle Holland linebacker. Now. Read that very, very well. The first team all Big Ten Lorenzo linebacker Styles last year. Lorenzo Styles. Isn't that a great linebacker name? <laughs> I love Perfect. it. That or a defensive uh, yeah. lineman. What's scary is that uh, he is At back again next year, as you mentioned, but uh, we don't have to play him. John Wales is going to attempt. What will be officially a 44 yard field goal. Fired away his longest. His longest in the other game last week was 29 yards. Hey, Lee, I can't hear we had to you waste a time out there, Don. Yes. You know, the kicking team, you can't allow these kind of mental mistakes. 
So a timeout here at Husky Stadium with 9.55 remaining. We'll be right back. So Sunny Six Keller, are they going to try the 44-yard field goal? We've seen everything else except the fake field goal. Well, I think they want to make up for those two missed extra points and get 22 points up on the board. All right, it will be from the 44, the right hash mark. He's definitely got the leg to make it from here. Guys. Washington enjoying that eight-game winning streak against the Big Ten here in Husky Stadium. Remember the last time? A Big Ten team came in here and got a victory. It was back in 1976, 20 to 13. I remember as a freshman sitting in here in '69 when Rex Kern, John Brockington, Ooh. all those big boys, Jim Stillwagon, they were a dominating team. <laughs> I remember that game myself, sitting here watching. And what, what did you think when you were a freshman, ineligible in those days? Freshmen were that. Ooh, I got a big job ahead of me, or I've got a great opportunity ahead of me. This well, at that time we were running the wishbone, so I was not looking forward to running that against any team. But uh, Ohio State definitely opened my eyes to how big a game this can be in Seattle. Anytime. It was 40 to 7 on a wet, soggy day in Husky Stadium the last time the Buckeyes came out here. And John Wales will try to add to the point pile now from 44 yards. Yortson is holding and also knows how to throw. Long enough. He's got it. All right. John Good job. Job. 44 yard, yard field, field, field goal field. by John Wales as his stock got up as a Husky. And getting the points they needed badly. Washington now with a 22 to nothing lead. 950 remaining here in the second quarter. 44 yard field goal. Looks like that work with Jeff Jager is paying off for the young Wells. He had a tremendous right. leg on that one, Don. Well, he talked about, yeah, Jeff has helped me with the mechanics, but there are other things too, just the psychological approach. He says, when you get in a game, it's got to be just like practice, and that's the frame of mind you have to take. Don't think about anything else. Just Go through with your motions. Beautiful shot coming through the uprights. Wow, that's as close as you can get, Don. Yeah, it sure is. Everything is going Washington's way today. Bottom Let's line, it. it's still good. Yep. But you just get that feeling. It's it's this is Washington's day so far, or has been. Things are going right for the purple and gold. Wales again kicking to Demetrius Stanley and Sean Springs. Going right down Broadway this time, and Stanley leaves it on the K of Huskies in the end zone. So, first and 10 from the 20 yard line for the Buckeyes. John Wales has developed. Immensely First in the last six months. Spring ball, point. yes, he was a competitor and won it. But then he came in and just slammed the door since camp. He worked hard this summer, and that's what you have to do to compete at this level. That was a very nice kick. A little bit of wind aided there. 9.50 remaining here in the second quarter. Ohio State still trying to get on the board. They have a wide receiver to each side with Eddie George in the backfield. Setting up the screen. As Tillman tries to get outside and lawyer Malloy lowers the boom <laughs> on the wide receiver Buster Tillman. That's the one man that John Cooper talked about this week was how impressed he was with lawyers play against USC in Los Angeles. Well 6 2 200 and you can run like lawyer Malloy can and also he's got such a tremendous nose for the football he doesn't mind putting that helmet in there and he's only a sophomore folks. <laughs> Hopefully he'll stick around for a couple of more. <laughs> Never know these days. Second and one.
didn't get it is Eddie George. He was short and stopped by Richie Chambers. You see number 80 as a lead blocker going in motion. Quite a story. It's Ricky Dudley of Ohio State who was one of the co-captains of the basketball team for Ohio State and didn't uh, play any football at all in college just in high school and he came out impressed enough people and he's a backup tight end now to D.J. Jones. They like his athletic ability and his blocking ability. Ohio State one of four on third down conversion. Here it is. Oops. And Steve Hoffman feels very embarrassed right now. He might have seen some movement. We don't know. That's what he'll say. Certainly. Well, yeah, he was just all fired up to get across that line of scrimmage, and you don't blame him. So that takes care of the challenge to stop them from getting a first down. You make a mistake like that, Don. You know it's a mental mistake, and everybody's looking at it. You know you're going to see it on film. Now's a chance for him to come back, assert himself, and make a key play. Tillman comes in as a wide receiver, replacing Sanders for Ohio State. Buckeyes just trying to settle things down, do something constructive on the field. Get a drive going. Yeah, everything's been thrown at them and against them, and most of it's worked. Again, there's Dudley in motion. Play action. Flag goes down in the pack as they go deep to Tillman. No. Got a hold. Maybe holding back at the line of scrimmage on that big line. Lions and Reese are defending. Reggie with a terrific game against the Trojans last week. And right you are, Sonny Six Killer. They will back it up. This is the only game all year that Ohio State will face this kind of a attacking eight man front. Everybody else pretty much hitting and reading with an occasional blitz. Nothing like what Washington does. Gordon Reese, the referee, with the holding call. Cooper says this is a Hostile environment. The <laughs> most hostile environment we will face all year. And we don't even have our students back in school yet. <laughs> <laughs> so first and 21 after the holding call. Bobby Hoying has been going deep much of the day here in the first half. All back on the 23 of Ohio State. Eddie George. And again, the Huskies doing a pretty darn good job of jamming things up on the inside, stopping the 230 pound tailback. He does pick up four. Iwaliko and Fiala there for the tackle. You always seem to see Mike Iwaliko somewhere around that bottom of the pile. Here's a good shot of him right here, going against Corey Stringer up front there, LaShawn Daniels. Good job staying with it. Corey looks lost out there to me. I was going to say, Corey didn't look like an All American to me on that play. <laughs> no, he didn't. John Fiala, good movement, tough kid. Second and 17. Huskies can be a little soft now. Out of time. Short of the first down, up to the 40 yard line, where Lamar Lyons stops Tillman. But it'll be third and four. Good job by Hoying, not trying to get it all in one play. He had a lot of time that time. Uh, we uh, we only rushed four people and allowed them to sit back in that pocket with their fifth, five big guys up front blocking. Hoying with that 45-yard touchdown pass to Galloway right at the end of the first half against Washington last year back in Columbus. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half here. Third down and three. Hoying's going to throw. Going deep and too far. My goodness. Flag goes down. Reggie Reeser defending. Boy, that was a very late flag. I think the official threw it and uh, maybe he couldn't find his flag in time, but that was very late. There's the call. <laughs> uh, Lambo doesn't buy it. There's the feeling. Like to see that one again. And we might. Going on the right side of your screen, he's going deep all the way. 
see Lawyer Malloy in there reading his eyes. I didn't think this was in this was a catchable ball. And if it's not a catchable ball, shouldn't be a penalty. That puts Ohio State into Jim Lambright territory at the Husky just inside the Husky 45. And now with a little more spring in their step, Ohio State sends two wide receivers to the left. First and ten. Here's the rollout. Trying to go to number one, Dwayne Carter, a backup split in, was Hoyer. Hoyer's going out to talk to Dwayne, saying, "Hey, buddy." You know, they come both on look now. well covered, though, to me, the short and the uh, and the deep man. Dwayne has not been in there that much, so you know it's an opportunity for him, and maybe he hasn't worked on that route as much as let's say Joey Galloway would have. Some of the Buckeyes who made it out here, <laughs> they made it, but do they have enough money and gas to get home? With this kind of weather, maybe they don't want to. <laughs> maybe come Husky. <laughs> Convert. Second down and ten. Same formation with two receivers to the left. And George behind Hoyer. A lot of time. Incomplete to Sanders. Had it on his mitts. Malloy and Lyons, the two safeties. Boy, I showed you there how how that man can leap. They say he's a great leaper. Here's a here's a case right here. He's going to go down. Chris Sanders, right in the middle there, right on the hash, right on the hash marks. Wow, can he get up in the air? Oof. Hoying has impressed me as you take a gander at the Denver, Colorado native in they're terms of speed, uh, uh, the velocity of his passing stronger this year. Their receivers are not running anything real difficult. Just no. one short, one right in the middle, selling right down in the comfort zone. Third down and ten. Here comes the pressure from behind. Richie. Richie again from behind. I think Hoying was looking so much at Kilpatrick and the others in front of him that Richie came in and nailed him. Richie Chambers out of Lake Stevens with a big, big sack here in the first half. Here's a good, good job. David Kilpatrick coming in, taking on the blocker. Hoying sees that. No way, Richie Chambers. Showed Some, great speed on that, Don. I'm just going to say the same thing. That is the kind of speed that uh, All American Corey Stringer is not used to seeing. There's that hostile crowd John Cooper was talking about. <laughs> Who says all the students that's are? A, right? That's Rainier Alley up there. <laughs> Turn his punt. Leon Neal again will take it from the 15. A lot of room. Watch this. Big oh. time block. Oh, my. Oh, what a tag. <laughs> By number 20, Ikaika Malloy. He's he, the big time hitter, Don. Ikaika in Hawaiian means strong willed. So strong willed Malloy. <laughs> Hard <laughs> with, helmet. <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with the big time hit on the return. I saw this coming all the way. There it is. Alex Rodriguez, the fullback. <laughs> We're so busy watching that, we forgot about Leon Neal. <laughs> I know. Who got it up to the 25 yard line as Eric Battle and company go on out. You saw Ernie Conwell number 82, so it'll probably be a balanced tight end attack. It is two tight, out, tie, uh, tight ends. Five minutes to go in the quarter. Let's see if we can get a nice drive going here, Don. Lawyer with maybe three yards, four at best. Lorenzo Styles with a tackle. Let's listen. Leon does a good job of setting up this block. I can't hear it. <laughs> I thought maybe ABC was going to try to do a replay with the Nat sound. So. <laughs> this is a good time to look for a tight end. Mark Bruner needs to catch one in here in the middle. I think it's a good time to hit him. Second down and six from the 29. Checking off, Sonny. Nothing doing. Got to the 31 yard line. So the offense really hasn't done a whole lot here in the last couple series. Sean Spring, the cornerback, making the play on Nip. They spoiled us in the first quarter. We expect these long, fast drives. That's fine as long as the defense doesn't give up any points. Third down and four. The clock 
Stopped at 428 here in the second quarter. All the points coming in the first 15 minutes. Jordan is wide right, and here comes Kaufman. Oh, had it not been for Lorenzo Styles, he'd still be running. The leading tackler of this Buckeye team last year was about the only one between Kaufman and Lake Washington. Good job up front. Frank Garcia, Patrick Kesey. I tell you, Lorenzo Styles, you're right, Don. If he hadn't grabbed him by the shoelaces, he'd be gone. Here's a good job. Trevor Highfield also doing a tremendous job. Ooh, look at that. Luke Fakel didn't know what hit him. Sent him halfway to the Husky bench. But they do get the first down. On first to 10, Kaufman. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how many yards he would have gotten, but he certainly had the linebackers thinking. He showed the move across the middle, stopped and went to the outside, and then couldn't hold on. It's often tough to reach up with your hands reversed to catch that ball, just like we talked about last week. So it'll be second down in 10 with four minutes to go here in the first half. Napoleon with 83 yards in the first quarter alone. Showing blitz. Powell too close. Got a free one. Napoleon knows it. Gets down to the 45, and no favors done by the Ohio State bench to stop him either. Looked like a cue ball on the table. Tito Paul knocks him out of bounds. One of the safeties. Was that, was that Powell, Sonny, getting in there? Yeah, it was. And Styles has a bad wheel. That would be critical to Ohio State. led this team in tackles last year and is clearly the heart and soul of this defense. Penalty is refused obviously as they get it down to the 44 of Ohio State and a first down. I don't know how you can argue that one John. Powell seems to be all right. Lorenzo Styles it's hard to tell exactly what's wrong with him. You can't tell if it's a cramp or if it's a slight ding on his left knee but it's something to do with that left leg. That play, the after the play when Napoleon got pushed, reminded me of the guy going in the dugout. <laughs> you know, no opposing player reaches up to stop him. <laughs> and Lorenzo continues to be taken care of. So it's first and ten. Richard Thomas. Oh, quick hitter. That's the play you talked about, Sonny, that would work well against a big line like this and a fast line. Well, Richard Thomas, you know, 220 pounder. That's all he doesn't need a very big hole to hit that crease going up the middle and Tim Patillo if he hadn't made that stop he'd have been gone far and away his longest run of the year as Richard had only two carries with his longest being five yards against SC. Yeah what a threat that becomes when you've got a fullback that can do it and he did that two years ago. Back in the 92 season. Oh he's capable of doing those type of runs there's no doubt. Got it by the nose. Husky's doing a great job of eating up the clock here in the second quarter. Big boost. We get some kind of score here before halftime. As Kaufman now up to number two. Oh, I just go to number one. Okay, thank you. He came in not needing all that many yards. What, 158 to become all purpose number one? Hurry, you. Leon Neal down to the 30 yard line. Boy you love those first down plays when you gain five yards. That just shows how strong that offensive line is working together up front. Yeah he needed only 158 coming in and then 288 to become the all time rushing lead. And that's the one that he said means an awful lot to him. But here's Leon. Here's a good job. Here's Richard Thomas lead blocker up the hole. He's running. Good job in Balasari. Richard is having a good ball game. I'm impressed with this offensive line of the Huskies. Pushing some big people around awfully well. Second down and five. Kaufman waits, slices, then dices down to the 22. Flag. And that's going to be a late hit or some unsportsmanlike conduct and Patrick Kessie is the one who's pulled out of the pile number 54 of Washington Styles and Belisari were in there on the tackle 
Napoleon could have been gone on that play, Don, but he yes. ran into his offensive tackle, Andrew Peterson. This, if you can read it quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, they should fax that to all of the football fans. <laughs> Our producer, Steve Woodruff, having fun with this one, saying, I dare you to read all this and understand it and still watch the game. Bottom line is, don't get in a fight any longer. And we're still waiting. Here's the call. And again, as I said, the man that they were pulling out of the pile in the middle was Patrick Kessie, number 54 of the Huskies. Lynn Johnson just came in to replace him. There's Big Andrew. There he is, right there, late hit. Just That'll trying do. to protect his Heisman candidate. And you need to do that sometimes. Sometimes it's worth 15 yards as opposed to somebody being out for a week. First and 10 from the 38 yard line. Janowski is wide left. It's the fake. And Richard Thomas down to the 33 yard line, well short of the first down, as Craig Powell showed you again some of that great 4 4 speed as a linebacker. They split Thomas out the play before as a wide receiver, a flanker to the right side. So they're moving the fullback around a little bit too. They'll do that, Don. What Dietrich wants to do, the offensive coordinator, is just try to do anything to spread that team out, spread that defense, and look for an advantage. I think that might have been the tight end who was wide open, or Bjornsson. Second down, Kaufman trying to pop it outside behind his fullback, but closing in very well again with Styles. Also, Tito Paul, the strong safety, but Styles, he's got everything to make it big time and put a few coins in his pocket in a pro career. Third and four, Don, to see if we can get a play in here. Napoleon's run the ball well in this situation. We're spreading them out again. Third down and four. Two wideouts left, Bjornsson wide to the right. There's the checkoff. Kaufman in the back, they show blitz. They go to Kaufman, didn't get it. As Mike Vrabel, the defensive end, makes the tackle. What do you think? He's going to kick it. Wales tried one from 44 and made it. So it's fourth and two, ball on the 30. So we're talking about a 47 yard attempt. You want to go into halftime with positive things happening to you. One of them is getting points on the board. Give you three more points, give you 25. That's a nice lead going in halftime against OSU. And don't plan on a fake with conference play coming up. We'll see. He certainly had enough last time to go for 47. Right. Yeah, it's going wide to the right. No good from 47 yards with 57 seconds remaining in the first half. Lambeau's team, they led at half last week against SC, 14 10. Right now, a little different. 22 to nothing on top of their opponent, the Buckeyes. Uh, cheerleaders got their game face on. They're ready to get out there in the field at halftime. Got their W's on there yeah, already. They're ready. So the ball returns to the line of scrimmage, which is the 30 yard line. And out comes Bobby Hoyan on what we thought was going to be a blustery wet day. And oh, my, another postcard afternoon in Seattle. <laughs> Coffin with 145 yards here in the first half. Seven short of what he had all day against SC. First and ten with two wideouts to the right and one left. Hoyan looking now back to the right side. Good heat. Got a man wide open. That being Tillman, but the pressure from behind on the quarterback pays off. Justin Thomas getting there just in time to make him hurry to throw. His man was wide open out Tillman. there on the far side of the field. Good pressure by Justin. Huskies playing in a prevent defense. Giving Tillman a lot of room, a good heat by the people up front. 51 seconds left, first half. Sanders comes out. 
to the left with two to the right side. Upstairs all the way. Now going to come in and Justin Thomas says I'll <laughs> let you get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. <laughs> Justin playing for. The left side is an outside linebacker. Donovan Schmidt of course still out again right. this week but Justin stepping up to the plate and having a good series. This time you see Alex Rodriguez the fullback a converted <laughs> linebacker Don. There he is he's beat. Justin good job and that's again a coverage sack nobody was open downfield on that play. Justin coming back from that auto accident in December where he was hit by a drunk driver and then hit from behind by a second drunk driver. Can they get another playoff? Eight seconds to go. They're just going to be happy getting halftime. No more points by the Huskies. Put on the ground, and Rodriguez gets his first carry of the year. As the Huskies win the battle, the first 30 minutes anyway, as they lead the Ohio State Buckeyes by the score of 22 to nothing. We'll return on Prime Sports Northwest after these messages. Washington will receive to begin the third quarter. They won the toss at the beginning of the game, deferred as Ohio State received. Michigan and Notre Dame tied at 17 17. So Washington will receive. Just looking at the numbers, Kaufman had 144 yards in the first half. He needed 288 yards rushing to become the all time. Ball carrier for Washington, so <laughs> match his first half effort, and Sonny, it's all over. He should do it all in one day, Don. <laughs> I like he said, "Well, just get it over with." <laughs> Rashawn Sheehy, the man wearing number one, may be the heir apparent. Leon Neal certainly will be in there, but Sheehy had an outstanding spring. He's a great athlete, and remember that name. They won't split apart until the guy is almost on top of the ball to kick it. They only give it away. Which side Napoleon's going to go to? Right. Kaufman will get it in his own end zone and he'll stay there. Here's what Washington did with the football in the first half. The touchdown that was a 38 yarder then the punt another touchdown that was the dive the one yard then the 25 yard pass punt field goal of 44 yards and then the missed field goal with 57 seconds left. And they got great field position on many occasions they started in Buckeye territory as you see well, only two times I thought it was more than that but it was always around midfield. So John Cooper who depending on which school does the announcement is either three and one against the Huskies or two and two personally <laughs> in his career. First attempt for Washington on their own 20 yard line. He gets the call right off the bat and quickly picks up nine yards on first down stopped by Craig Powell number 84. Right out of the blocks. Got his windshield cleaned, oil checked, and he's ready for the second half. <laughs> no more bugs on there, huh, Don? No more bugs. Here comes Richard Thomas. Whoop. Napoleon cut it back on the backside there. We said Craig Powell's name a lot today. We have. He has been around a great deal. Also, Mike Vrabel was in on the play. Kaufman now, around 154 yards unofficial. Second down and one. Looks like he got it, so let's call it 154. You know, I meant it in jest, but it could happen. The rate he's going today of picking up all 288 yards in the game. Whoa. He's already the number one all purpose ball carrier in Husky history. John Cooper, I was surprised when they interviewed him Monday. They asked, What do you think of Kaufman? He says, Well, all teams have a great running back of some kind. And he said yeah he's dangerous I just didn't get the feeling like he had the kind of respect that most people do in the in the Pac-10 anyway. First and 10 from the 30. No play action and boom down he goes fumble. and they call it a fumble. Ohio State football. Matt Finkus came down on top of him. And Ohio State has the ball. Heward took a hit. As the Buckeyes have a chance now to get on the board in a hurry. 
And Vrabel coming up with the loose ball. But credit the sack and the loose ball by Matt Finkus, the other defensive end. So now Washington with a bit of a wake up call and that 22 to nothing lead will have to go to work on their own 20 yard line. And they preserve the shutout. Boying at quarterback, a wide receiver. Tillman to the right side. They give to Eddie George. Maybe a couple as Steve Hoffman is there rolling it up. Good job by Steve Hoffman. He's using that strength and speed that we talked about earlier in the ball game. Last week versus USC, seven tackles and one sack. I am so impressed with his play. Yeah, how many times does a nose tackle get seven tackles? Six unassisted in the ball game. It's really impressive. Moving along, picking it up where his big brother left it off. Dave Hoffman, the All American for Washington, is an inside linebacker during the title season and in 92. Second down and eight. Tillman to the left side. George. He's got some room. And first down to the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Buckeyes as Russell Hairston and Lawyer Malloy make the tackle. So Cooper's got something going after the turnover. Here you see it, Don, coming this way, pulling the offside tackle all the way along the line of scrimmage. Jamie Sumner there getting a wall block. That big running back doesn't need a lot of room. You know, 230 no. pounds, he's got a lot of power. Can do a lot himself. Iwaliko and Hoffman in the defensive line waiting along with Fiala, a tackle. Or I didn't linebacker rather. First. And goal from the 10, just inside the 10. George, big hole, short of the goal line, but down to the one where Lawyer Malloy had to make the stop, the safety. When they've made their big yardage, Sonny, it's been up the middle, inside the guards. Well, here's a good look at it right here. John Fiala getting his first start of the year. Getting a good block. He wasn't able to knock off that big guard coming out to hit him. Much like last week against SC down in this part of the field. Ohio State showing a lot of life here after the turnover, the fumble and recovery by Mike Vrabel. And here it is. Second and goal right at the one yard line. Power formation. Hoying tries to do it. No sign by the officials. Bobby Hoying Hoying the ball. So it will be third down. Third down Stop them here, and it's, it gets interesting. I don't know. If I have a tailback at 6'3", 230, yeah. I think I'd give it to him. Yeah, I was surprised <laughs> at that call myself. Rodriguez, your linebacker, turned fullback. I'd be using him as my lead man, and I'd say, okay, my best against your best. And my quarterback is not going to be my best when it comes to punching it through. Let's see if they go over the All-American, Corey Stringer. He's number 78, the right tackle. No. He'll make it. Fourth down. Looks like he lost his footing, plus the Huskies did a nice job of penetrating. What are you going to do, John Cooper? Oh, sorry. <laughs> he took a deep breath there, Don. I, I think you've got to go for the touchdown. No doubt. Here it is. LaShawn Daniels there trying to get a block up front. Oh, good penetration right there. Who was that? That was David Kilpatrick. Great penetration to stop the fullback in his lead blocking efforts. Going to go outside. No! John Fiala with a tackle! What an effort by the Husky defense and John Fiala. First and goal from the 10. Ohio State can't punch it in. Three tries from the one. Nada. Here it goes, Don. They're going on the side of Corey Stringer. Going over the right side. DJ Jones trying to make a block at tight end. There's Fiala. Great job. Who says speed can't overcome Braun? <laughs> Hope John doesn't choke on his gum. <laughs> First and ten. Now for Washington inside the one. 
Wouldn't that be something to find <laughs> busted one? I'm really getting greedy. Uh, you now. are. You are. You I want really that 144 am. in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't that have been something? <laughs> Napoleon's only averaging about 9.6 yards per carry. Let's watch Fiala by himself this time. Oh, what a great camera look here. Here he comes in behind him. Oh, there's nobody there to block him. And that's your backup inside linebacker behind Incaliaga. Kaufman now averaging officially 8.42 yards per carry. Taking a dip. Second down and four. Kaufman again didn't get much at all. Closing in well. Finkus was there, number 92, the defensive end. He's having a pretty good ball game, Don. Andrew Peterson didn't get a chance to get a block on him that time. You're not hearing much from the nose guard with a defensive tackle, but a lot from the defensive end. Highly involved in tackles rather than just standing up. The interference of the guards or tackles, offensive guards or tackles or centers. Damon Hewitt, they dodged the bullet after getting hit hard on the sack and fumbling. The only turnover for Washington and no points by the Buckeyes. Third down and four. Very big play. Can't do it with Richard Thomas. They've got to be conservative, certainly. Short of the first down. Needed to get to just outside the 11. And he's about a yard short. So this will by far be, after Thomas' efforts, Jeff Prince's most important punt. And he has struggled today, Sonny. He has, most definitely. It's doesn't look like much of a breeze will be effect here right now. From right in the middle of the end zone, and Sean Springs waits. Garcia with a snap. Oh. Low, very low, wobbly. Punt, and Prince is really struggling today. It's only up to the 37-yard line. So a timeout here at Husky Stadium as Cooper and the Buckeyes will try again with very good field position. Still the goose egg on the wall for Ohio State. It is 22 zip Washington after the short punt to the 37 yard line. By Jeff Prince Ohio State will try again to get some points. Pass incomplete. Good it job defensively by Richie Chambers. Oh boy is Richie playing well today. The intended receiver was Ricky Dudley the former can't say former I'll say current basketball player. For the Buckeyes and now football. Here it is right here. Richie Chambers getting back in coverage, getting his hand up there. Whoa. He still almost came up with that catch. Ricky Dudley was the high school Texas player of the year as a receiver. Big receiver. Doesn't have big numbers as a basketball player, but they think a lot of him. He's a captain of the team. That's true. Second down and 10. Got a wide receiver to each side. Eddie George play action. Looks right back to Eddie George again, who makes the completion down to the 27, very close to the first down, about a yard short as he is tackled by Chambers. Active linebackers for this Washington defense. Bobby Hoyne's doing a pretty good job. Little play action pass. He stands strong in the pocket. You know he's not going to go too deep. The tight ends are open today. They don't go to the tight ends hardly at all. There's no. only what one three receptions going into this game by the tight end. And all of last year D.J. Jones only had three receptions. However the tight end last year Cedric Saunders caught a bundle. Third down and one. Got it. Great move by Eddie George or he would have been down by Reggie Reeser in the backfield. Lamar Lyons makes the stop along with Kilpatrick. First down for the Buckeyes at the 24 yard line. Well, 
So close. Almost had Mr. George for a TFL. <laughs> Tackle four laps. He had 49 net yards in the first half. So he will be the workhorse for John Cooper this year as they take on Pittsburgh next week and then very shortly they get into Big Ten conference play and a timeout called by Hoyer. So we'll do the same. Seven minutes left, third quarter, still 22 zip. Twenty-two to nothing. How did we get there? Well, here's an example. First of all, the 38-yard run by Napoleon Kaufman, part of his 144-yard first half. Then came a one-yard jump over the pile that Buckeye fans say no, it wasn't a touchdown. Referee said he did, and that he broke the plane. After a fumble by Eddie George, a 25-yard pass from Damon Heward to Eric Bjornsson down in the left corner of the end zone, and then a 44-yard field goal by the newcomer John Wales. Great crowd here. I'd say, I don't know if it was a sellout officially or not. We haven't been given the attendance figures yet. Along with Sonny Sixkiller, who's still got the itch, and every now and then throws that right arm into a passing position. <laughs> I haven't uh, thrown too many pins today. <laughs> Along with Sonny, I'm Don Poyer. Good to have you with us. But it's turned out to be a gorgeous day. You can always tell when we're doing ABC games, folks, because the network has long breaks between some <laughs> of these plays. And their timeouts. First and ten now for Ohio State on the 24-yard line of Washington. Dudley in motion. George. Look out. Touch. Down to the 10. He should and does. Touchdown, Ohio State. Well executed play led by Dudley and company on that left side of the line. The Buckeyes are on the scoreboard. Everybody looking to the bench. Do you want to go for two or not? They might be going for two. Here comes Big George right up the middle. John Fiala getting knocked backwards a little bit, losing his balance. Boy, he gets a full head of steam, and you can see what he can do. DBs don't like to see that kind of thing oh, yeah. running at you full speed. 230 pounds, that's for sure. Going for two. They are indeed going for two. So they'll line it up on the left hash mark. They got the pure freshman at right tackle now. Looking to throw. They got it. So it is 22 to 8. Getting past the Mar Lions. As John Cooper sees new life. And Carter, Dwayne Carter, makes the reception. 6.52 remaining here in the third quarter. As Ohio State now with 652 scores in the third. They've got all that beef on the right hand side. Hoying's doing a good job. Finds the open receiver. I believe it was 17, Chris Sanders, who had number 25, Lamar Lyons beat. Cooper's happy there, Don. 36 yard drive. There you go. Four plays. And George with that big 25 yard run. And well executed. Time for the Huskies to go to work. Kaufman and Rashawn Sheehy back awaiting the kick. Mike Malfat is the man kicking off. He does the kickoff chores while they use Josh Jackson as their field goal kicker or extra point kicker. Here we go. Returnable. Kaufman from the three. And gets up to the 28 yard line. Good return for the Huskies. As Malfa does his duty. And the Huskies now need to put something together. They've scored all their touchdowns, the three in the first quarter. 
a field goal in the second and nothing so far in the third. Who adjusts better? That's the question now. Kaufman going out must have been shaken up a little bit on that kickoff. Dr. Steve Bramwell looking at him right now. They're taking a shot to the belly. He took himself out of the game quite a few times last week versus USC as well. From the 29 yard line, they go to Richard Thomas, the fullback, who gets maybe a couple of yards to the 31 where Lorenzo Styles was waiting for him. You need to get this crowd back in the game, Sonny. Yeah, I think the band needs to get going or something. Uh, where's Rob Weller when you need him? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, if the def if the offense here can go down, and make a couple good plays here, get in the end zone, we'll be back into it. They'd probably be back into it anyway, but uh, it would help to score. Probably what we're talking about. Kaufman back in a tailback. Option pitch to Kaufman, and that's something that the Big Ten seen a fair amount of. He still gets up to the 35-yard line, or just short of. Styles and Powell waited for him, the two LBs. A little frustration there, shaking the head. Clearly, Ohio State has figured something out here. Might be a good opportunity to throw the ball. We haven't thrown the ball much here in the last quarter and a half, and uh, everybody's going to be keen on Napoleon. Less than 500 on third down. And they haven't gone to the wide receivers all that much today, except for the touchdown of Jorgensen and a couple, a couple other occasions. Third down and five. Pitch again. First down and then some. Kaufman to midfield and out of bounds <laughs> at the 48 yard line of Ohio State. First down. Boy, if he had had the vision just to slow down, put it in reverse for just a moment, let his blocker get out there, he had room to cut back to the middle of the field and probably could have gone all the way. Tim Patillo was the man who fought it off to make the tackle. We might get a shot of it here, Don. And this was not the same play as the one previously. Even nope. though oh, Damon takes a big time hit there. <laughs> Powell. If he had slowed down just a hair there, Patrick Kesey, if he had made that block, he'd have been cut to the middle, he'd been gone. Nevertheless, first to 10 now for the Huskies as they get into Buckeye territory on the 48. Leon Neal down to the 43 yard line where Greg Belisari, the linebacker, finds him. He's the youngster out of Boca Raton, Florida. And replaced the great Mark Williams, who was an outstanding linebacker for them. And 66 tackles last year, 44 in assistant. He was the player of the year in South Florida. It seems like every time we face a team, there's some super prep, all <laughs> pro, all state. That being Belisari, right? <laughs> yes. Second down and six. Bjornsson wide right. Two tight end. Check out. Short game. Kaufman, by the way, with 180 yards at this point. As Craig Powell makes the stop after the three yard gain. Neal still in there. Kaufman has not returned. So they face yet another tough third down. Janowski comes in. Ernie Conwell, the second tight end, goes to the sideline. I don't see Kaufman out on the edge of the field where he normally is when he comes back in. They call it third and three, Don. Neal gets the call, and first Neal down. gets the first down. Down to the 35 where he stopped by Tim Matillo, the free safety. You like to hear it when that free safety has to make the tackle. That's right. Good surge by the offensive line on the last play. Kaufman is back on the field. So is the other tight end, Ernie Conwell. Bruner had two catches in the first half from his tight end position. He lines up. On the left side is the tight end, Conwell to the right. Little play action, getting it out. Richard Thomas, who, what a hit by <laughs> Kerner, number 46, the right corner. Talk about a full head of speed. Richard, wow. put the pads back in, put the helmet on. Big time hit by Kerner. He is a gentleman. Did a good job of catching the ball. Very short gain, only a couple. 
Second down. Here's the pass eight. here, Don. Excellent job. Just barely gets his head turned around. Good form tackle by Kerner. Boy, you want to show a highlight film and how to tackle. That's it right there. Stop the forward progress. Wales keeping loose. The sidewinder. Richard still trying to get his equipment back in order. <laughs> Second down and eight. Fred Coleman and Janoski are wide left with Johnson to the right side. Hoffman alone behind Hewitt. He can get outside, get a block by a receiver. No, pursuit catches up with him. Fred Coleman was doing his darndest, number 22, to try to create a lane for Kaufman to cut inside. 99, Luke Fakel for the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes disrupted that whole play, made penetration right through Frank Garcia and Patrick Kesey. And allowed Craig Powell to make another tackle. Third down and six. The yards are coming hard now for Washington. It's been a good long drive, but Powell, Styles, Vrabel, Finkus, they make it tough. Third and six. Going deep, Bjornsson. Out of bounds. Good, good defense by the redshirt freshman, Sean Springs. He's the guy they think is going to be the next Jack Tatum for the Ohio State Buckeyes, and he comes from pretty good blunt lines with Ron Springs being his father. Yeah, Dad had 2,100 yards in, what, two, three years before going on to Dallas, so they've done the job all right. Wales will try a very long field goal attempt. This one will be from 49. Ooh. He, he hit it from 44. Missed from 47. And now we'll try 49. Long ways. It's amazing how narrow those goal posts are. They're not far out. No good. Ohio State will have good field position when we return just over two minutes left here in the third. Last couple of minutes of the third quarter as Washington leads 22 to 8 after giving up that touchdown of a 36 yard drive, 25 yard run by Eddie George. Washington with a fairly sustained drive, but they have to settle for a 49 yard field goal attempt that fell short. Ohio State's just only two touchdowns away from tying the ball game up. That, eight, that two point conversion. Could bear very strongly on the outcome of this game. Bobby Hoying at quarterback. First and ten from the 32 of Ohio State. George coming close as Fila makes the stop. Fiala, excuse me. John Fiala's been a busy boy today playing for Nick Aliaga. <laughs> but he says, I know. I know. Nice scene for him there, Sonny. Oh, it's great. And it's a good thing that the uh, linebackers are able to close in. We need our down linemen, excuse me, Don, but we need our down linemen to start coming up with some big plays here. I know their line is big. We got the quickness to start doing something up front. Strength now, strength and get quick. Second and seven. Tillman goes in motion. Rolling out. Out of bounds. What a leap. What a catch by Sanders <laughs> is right. Reggie Reese are there to take great pictures. Who? You say broad jump, long jump, 26 <laughs> feet? Yeah, he was up I can there. believe it. 26 9 and three quarters. There's big Corey Stringer, 78. I wonder if he's getting tired yet. <laughs> Took care of Fiala, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Ohio State two of eight on third down and it's third and long. 
Washington likes to hold a team to 80 percent failure on third and long. Two of eight so far. A lot of time. First down Sanders barely. Boy he was flirting with danger there all along. Check it it was Buster Tillman. Good underneath route by Buster. Wide open in the middle. Can't give them that much time, can they, Sonny? No, it's just a big wall there, and if you're not going to attack it, you can't go after it with just four pass rushes. Here he comes, just settling down right in the middle. There's, look who's back there defending him, Steve Hoffman, number 91. Hoying and the Buckeyes mixing it up well offensively. Huskies looking for a big play. They need some penetration. First and ten from the 43 of Ohio State. Under a minute here in the third quarter. George big hole as he gets into Husky territory and a first down to the 46 yard line. Hairston and Malloy there to drag him out. So the Buckeyes right now winning the battle in the line of scrimmage. And Kaufman needs to get back out on that field. It's amazing. He has 144 yards in the first half, and we're saying, well, they need more. Here's another shot, number 72, Jamie Sumner, that JC transfer coming around again. Big block on John Fiala. Beavers John's going to have to get over those blocks. Yeah, Beavers came down the other way, too, in a stump and was blocked out of the play as well. First and 10. Beavers that time staying home. Number Good job, 43. Mike. Man who had six tackles and three tackles for loss against USC. He felt, well, we did okay. We didn't reach our personal goals or team goals as an offensive line against the Trojans. And I don't think he's thinking about SC at this point. He's got a mountain with a silver helmet on top of it, right in front of him. And Corey Stringer. George now with 109 yards. So he's at 60 yards in the third quarter alone because he had 40 net yards, 49 net yards in the first half. Second and 10. Tillman down to the 25 as they look left and then pass it to the right. Lawyer Malloy with the tackle. I like that very much. Bobby Hoying, they're running the ball effectively. Comes across now, play action pass, wide open. End of the first, uh, check it, end of the fourth quarter. Going to be an interesting final 15 minutes here in Seattle. Three quarters are in the books. I'm Don Poyer along with Sonny Sixkiller. 22 to 8. The eight points coming in a third quarter touchdown by Ohio State, a 25 yard run by Eddie George. That was following a short punt. And uh, the previous series, if you recall, was when Ohio State was stopped on three downs from the one yard line. Washington couldn't get it very far out of trouble. A short punt by Prince. And then Ohio State came rumbling back on a 36 yard drive to score. And now they are threatening on the Husky 25 yard line where it is first and 10. And Sonny you made a good point during the break. They're mixing it up well and they're going to the quick slant passes that work so well. They work tremendously when you play action pass. You had great success running the football. If you're going to do a little play action pass those quick slants are hard to react to by those DBs. Sometimes when you bite on them a little double clutch by the quarterback and you got six on a deep play. You don't need much room. First and 10 from the 25. Sanders to the near side of the field. Tillman to the right side. Again, the quick slanting pass out of bounds near the 20 yard line is Sanders, covered by Reeser. Looking at the third quarter numbers, rushing yards, Ohio State, passing yards, none for the Huskies, a turnover for the Huskies, and the total yardage. So that kind of tells you why the score has. Titan now 22 to 8. That was Damon's fumble there the third quarter and right. uh, that's our goal line stand so we didn't give up any points on that one. But we got a bad punt out of there. Bad field position give yeah. them excellent field position and they got the score. And they score. Second down and five they get five on the pass to Sanders. Pressure on Hoyan. They've got to do something. Eddie George and they slow him down in the backfield. Nice job by Steve Hoffman number 91. 
Great penetration on that play. Ricky Dudley coming in motion to the near side, trying to make a, a block. Couldn't get there. Big play coming up, Sonny. This is third down and five from the Husky 21 as we're into the fourth quarter. I think it's a little closer to six yards, so it looks a little further, but yeah. we've had problems with these last week now. Our defense has worked on this in practice all week, third and, and five or longer. So let's see how they react on this one. He did lose some yardage. It's actually third and six. Must get down to the 15. Quick slant. Got a man open, and it is complete. No they way. Come. No way. No. Don. Okay. The other one argued. Had two officials, one marking, and the other says he was out of bounds. Yeah. Sanders, the receiver. Little discussion on the sidelines by the referees. Here it's coming right at us. It's a pretty good pass out here. Sanders with that great leaping ability, leaping out of bounds. Nope. Ball touched out of bounds before his knee came down. The referee on the right of your screen is the one who called it. Now the left of your screen. There it is. Ooh, he had a foot there. I thought his yeah. right foot got it. I thought the ball hit out of bounds before he, anything be. hit inbounds. That could very well be. I always believe in quarterbacks, you know? If that's what you say, Sonny, I believe. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, let's see. Where's the ball? Yep. Good call, Sonny. Right. Okay, fourth down and six. Flag. Flag before the snap, or certainly right at it. I know Eddie George moved in the backfield, but depending on if the play was set or not. There was some movement in the backfield. George Reese making the call. Fourth and 11, Don. Big difference. Do you go for the field goal? No timeout being called. And no sign of a kicker, which certainly makes sense. Pretty good gamble, fourth and 11 with 14 minutes to go. Look for Sanders, look for Tillman, the wide receivers. They're giving Dudley the right side a lot of room. Pressure! He could run for it. Short. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. Flushed out of the pocket by Kilpatrick, and the Huskies hold him. On downs, John Fiala, the big guy. The young man's had a lot of learning to do out there today. You know, a little bit of slipping, maybe letting guys not block him a little bit too long. But on this play, he came up with a big hit. Coverage again, nobody is open downfield, Don. Everybody can see that. Fiala coming up, making sure he's down before he can make the first. Huge defensive stand by the Huskies. And now they need to get this football out of trouble, get it into. Buckeye territory. 13:53. That clock is going to move so slowly here in the fourth quarter. Kaufman gets maybe four, maybe five. Good job. <laughs> yes. I love to watch him accelerate and get to the point of attack. He just gets up there and so faster, so much faster than anybody else. Patillo leading the charge defensively. But I've seen some great speed by the linebackers of Ohio State. Patillo in the secondary as well. And keep in mind, yes, they have three new starters, but Patillo, Paul, they played a lot last year. Well, those guys, yeah, they're just waiting their turn. Right. You know, and they've got a lot, of, and they do have decent speed back there, and they all react very well to wherever Napoleon goes. Bjornson and Janowski come out to the right side. It's second and six. Tight end, Bruner, all alone. Let's see where they mark it. Oh, he thought he was out, but he wasn't. Oh. My goodness. Neither referee, I didn't, you didn't hear a whistle, and nobody was waving to stop the clock, that being any official. Here it is on the far side. Mark Bruner breaking clean off the line of scrimmage. Wide open, get him the ball quicker. See, I think he thought he was out of bounds there. Finally is forced out. Clearly there, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> Belisari was the linebacker. Hoffman, a little delay, a little draw. Good for 10 yards and a first down. Down to the 40 of Ohio State, Lorenzo Styles. 
Little jitter buddy in there that time, Don. Little vintage Napoleon Kaufman. Here he goes again. Watch the center of the line of scrimmage. Frank Garcia right in front of you. This man took himself out of the play, left the middle wide open. Kessie with a good block on the left, number 54, too. Trevor Highfield, good job downfield. You love to see that. Offensive lineman, 10 yards downfield, throwing a block. <laughs> Jim's looking at us. You okay? Then get back in there. Hey, get back <laughs> out there, Napoleon. He's coming up close to a career high in a ball game, too. First and 10, Leon Neal. Reliable Leon. Gets it inside the 40 to about the 38 yard line, couple of yards before Styles meets him. Kaufman with 196 today. His career high was 209 against California two years ago, if you recall. 48 more yards to be the all time? For, for a personal career. Personal career. Yeah, he had 209 against Gilby in 92. One of the first times he had to start. This is a good number. You see Kaufman at 196. Husky since 1968, they've gone 4 0 whenever they're, they're a ball carrier had 200 yards or more. Second down and eight. Yortson. Take that height, take advantage of it, knocked out of bounds at the 10 yard line, and that was going against the veteran, Kerner, number 46. Is it offensive or defensive? That's the question with the flag down. That's the question. Was it Bjornsson going over him or not? We'll wait for George Reese. There it is. Either way, Don, that was a tremendous catch by York, Eric Bjornsson. Against their veteran cornerback. Throwing on the left side of the screen. Damon putting it up there where nobody else can get it. That's why you love those receivers that are six feet five and great hands. Extremely good hands. What a beautiful catch by a very popular player on this team, Eric Bjornsson. Here's another look at it. Great timing. You know what happens timing. sometimes, Don, when you throw a ball up there, you like to throw them short because the DB, you know, is going towards the end zone. And you wonder how soon is he looking Receiver back. Receiver can come back a little bit. On first down, Kaufman finds nothing but a closed door at the line of scrimmage. A host of Buckeyes were there. That Luke Fakel in the middle is having a good ball game again. He gets in there, gets penetration, disrupts the line play. Napoleon knocking on that 200-yard day door. <laughs> Got to come up with a score here, and I'm not talking three. Second and goal from the ten. Much like Ohio State, only they got nine on first down, and it was second and goal from the one, but failed to punch it in. They send Bjornsson to the left along with Janowski. Bruner, the tight end to the right side. And Conwell, the tight end on the left. And he's looking Bruner all the way. Does he make it? No. Oh, what a great effort. Circus catch attempt. Tito Paul was defending. Number nine, the safety. Just keep, he couldn't keep that big body in the play. Quick out. Mark Brunner, hang on. That's a catch. That's that awfully was close. Awful close. That's really close to a legal catch. Washington is 5 of 11 on third downs. This one, third and goal from the 10, however. The only wide receiver is Bjornsson. Man coverage. Don't see it all that often in the Big Ten. Let me just try to go. No, nope. all the way. He's down to the five, where it'll be fourth down. Looking to the sidelines, will John Wales come out? I say you got to kick it here, Don. Here he comes, yep. But that will make a big difference. That'll make it 25 to 8. 201. Hoffman already at that 208 from two years ago. Dennis Fitzpatrick has said 249. I saw that game. He ran for about 390 because he zigzagged everywhere <laughs> against the Cougars. And he was playing quarterback too, right? <laughs> yes, he was. This will be a 22-yard attempt. And it is good. So John Wales with two field goals today, one of 44 and one of 22. So he is two of four in today's efforts. will return. Right after this.
22 yard field goal makes Ohio State have to score on three occasions. Should they score two touchdowns and go for two and be successful that's 16 points added to their eight. That's still 24 Washington's at 25. So they need at least that in a field goal. Well they'd have to hold us too. And after right. that last drive it was a nice effort to get down at least get some points. Right. Another great kick by Wales. Demetrius Stanley simply catches and we've not seen what have we had a return at all by Ohio State in today's game. Certainly not many on kickoffs I mean. Not very many Wales well, doing very well when, when they did. I believe Terry Holloman put an end to it. Yeah, he did. <laughs> early That's in right. The first half. Very early in the game. Correct, you are. Big ten minutes for the Washington defense, and offense for that matter, against John Cooper and the Buckeyes, trying to extend that string, make it nine straight victories over Big Ten teams here in Seattle. Napoleon Kaufman has certainly done his part with 201 yards unofficially today, with most of the fourth quarter to go. First and ten from the 20 yard line for Bobby Hoyan and the Buckeyes. Play action all the way. They're going to go upstairs clearly. There's the pass again to the tight end, Dudley, as he is defended by Lamar Lyons, number 25. He wanted to go deep on that play. Nobody open. Red, Mr. Harrison had him like a blanket out there. Dudley saying, you know, you don't have people run into you when you're making rebounds in the Big Ten. As a basketball player. I want to check out his UC Dudley. I want to see that 63 Impala that Lamar Lyons has been restoring a gift from his <laughs> grandfather. Yeah, those in snow, Mr. That's right, they did. Second down and ten. In the play action, fooling nobody. But they got a man wide open and out of bounds. He is number 83, Terry Glenn, a backup. Flanker. Glenn gets the first down after a gain of 19 yards. Kaufman still enjoying a break. They went 76 yards on that last drive to get the 22 yard field goal. If nothing else, they ate up almost four minutes here in the fourth quarter. First and 10 from the 39 of Ohio State. Sanders left Tillman right. Flushed out of the pocket now trying to buy time throws. Ooh, that's going to be a flag. Yeah. That's on lawyer Malloy all the way. Coming up from behind against Sanders. Could see the bump. I'm not sure if Sanders liked to play or not but he was willing to give lawyer the football. Yeah it's going to say <laughs> didn't fight for him. <laughs> Afterwards, uh, was ready to hand it to him. You know, one thing we should talk about here, Don. First down. So first down, Ohio State on the 34 of Washington. We defensively, we still have to give them pressure. Bobby Hoeing, even on that play, had what five seconds to get rid of the football. I don't think if we can sit back and just play soft, let him tick down the field. You got to be able to come after him. Hoeing impresses me. He is. Uh, Vastly improved over the year and certainly since the first meeting last year against Washington. Well, he's big, strong, and he's uh, real cool back there in that pocket. Yeah, has the presence to look downfield and stay away from the defenders. The rushers. First and ten. Watch out. Richie Chambers buries Hoying from behind. <laughs> There's some of that Lake Stevens speed. Ooh. He's had a couple of those today. Here's another look at it. He's down at the bottom of the screen there. Nobody picking him up. Terrible play action play on this one. Nobody blocking offside. Yeah, if anything, you're not fooling the Huskies on play action when you're down 25 to 8 with nine minutes to go. So it'll be second down in 14 on the loss of four. Comes the pressure again. They let it come in all the way as they throw to DJ Jones, the tight end. Very close to the first down. I believe he has it. As Lawyer Malloy was there with him. 15. They get it by one, so it's first and ten. Stopping the clock with eight and a half minutes to go. 
There's DJ Jones. We talk about our tight ends. This guy's a big kid too. 6'4", 250, settles down right in the middle. John Fiala had, had blitzed on that play and left the middle wide open. Crowd starting to get a little uneasy now. First and ten. Going for the end zone. No. As Tillman was the intended receiver. Malloy and Reese are back there with him. Loosen up, cameraman. <laughs> camera Loosen man. up. He just got a very, very close, <laughs> close look at Tillman. Here it is. Bobby Hoeing throwing it where nobody's going to catch it and Here. nothing else. Buster Tillman may be able. Whoa! That's the best move right there. I thought Chris Sanders was the track guy. <laughs> <laughs> a new hurdler is born on the Buckeye track team. Second down and 10. Dwayne Carter wide to the left side. Closing in, still alive. Chambers gets him again. That's tackle number 13 for him today. We had three people back there. Steve Hoffman, Big Deke, Devers was back there. Richie Chambers, of course, makes the sack. 13 tackles a day for Richie Chambers. Isn't that amazing? That is outstanding. Having a career day is the man who proposed to his then now fiance on picture day here at Husky Stadium. <laughs> Did he invite all the fans to the wedding? Yeah, well, that's a <laughs> standing open invitation to all 10,000 people who probably arrived here. Big down here, Don. Third down and 12. Chambers with three and a half sacks as a part of his 13 tackles. Third and 12. Across the middle. Nope. No. It'll be fourth down and 12. Big 88, Mikey Waliko dropping back in coverage again. Imagine this team had Joey Galloway play. Could have had an effect. Then again, think if Incaliaga had played this game too. It's true. John Fiala's played well along with this man, Steve Hoffman, number 91. They have had many receptions to the wideouts today, Don. None of them are able to do what Joey Galloway could do after they catch the ball, and that's run with it. Fourth down and 12. Need to get to the 14. Going for everything in the end zone. No. Sanders with a terrific second effort. Lawyer Malloy with the better one. Yes. And the Huskies home. They take over on their own 26. Here's the pass. The wobbly duck coming out. Two people on the intended receiver. Lawyer Malloy, of course, out jumping. For the knockaway. Sanders almost getting the rebound. He is one outstanding athlete. Yes, he is. Clearly. Timeout is called here at Husky Stadium as John Cooper fails to put more points on the board. Huskies still lead it. Ohio State has driven against this Washington defense down to the Husky one to the Husky 18 and the Husky 23 and they've lost the down they lost the ball on downs here in this half defense has done its job the rubber band defense first and 10 from the 26 Huskies good again as we've said like a broken record a long drive to eat up the clock. Napoleon with about five yards on first down. Here you go. Since 1986. Jamie Morris. 
Napoleon is something special. I remember when we were enjoying the 90 and 91 seasons, we often had to tell ourselves we should enjoy this because this is a very special moment in Husky history. Few teams will ever play as well as they did. Likewise for Napoleon now. You won't see many tailbacks like him. He had the quickest feet. He looked like he was on roller skates. <laughs> Remember that in 90 and 91, 91 especially. Freshman year. Pass complete to Bruner, short of the first down. So it'll be third and about three yards. Tito Paul closed in on Bruner. Only one yard on the play. Yeah, it's a shame. You know, that's that's one play where you do a great play action fake and you throw it for a one yard game. <laughs> and a diving catch and yeah. the poor guy, you know, burns the elbows on the AstroTurf. Gets and hit in the back. Yeah, yeah. And spiked in the back from a strong safety and then gets one yard. Yeah. <laughs> Bjornson comes out to the near side with Janowski out into the sunlight. Kaufman still back there, right behind his left tackle. Third down and four, and let's see. Could be a first down for the Huskies if it goes their way, but Buckeyes are pointing towards purple. Before the snap, an illegal snap, offense. Five yards, previous spot, still third down. Third down and nine for Jim Lambright. An illegal snap? Would he snap it real quick and nobody saw it? Probably a little <laughs> moved it a little. You know, they allow, as you know, they allow a center to adjust his hands on the ball Correct. and move it around the way he wants it. May have done a little more than he was supposed to. Trying to draw him off, maybe a little quirky move down there. Five of 12 on third down conversion by the Huskies. This one is third and nine. Looking to get up to the 37 and nowhere close. And it's time for Jeff Prince to come in, and he needs a good punt as Lorenzo Styles gets yet another tackle along with Craig Powell. So Prince needs to boot this one halfway to Maiden Bower Bay, and the Huskies will boot easily. Sean Springs waiting. 5 10 left in the game. Another horrible punt. Very wobbly and off the right side of his foot. He's just not getting it on the sweet spot of his right foot. And nobody feels worse about it than Jeff Prince. 4.58 remaining. And Ohio State with pretty darn good field position at the 49 of the Buckeyes. From here we take a week off and then we head to the southeast and take on Dennis Erickson in Miami the Battle of Snohomish County in Miami with <laughs> Erickson against Lambright to Snohomish County products then come home for UCLA and San Jose State and Arizona State before the dogs go to Oregon. First and 10 from the 49 of Ohio State. Hoying will go upstairs every time fumble. that goes that might be a fumble no incomplete pass ruled incomplete by the referee. Deke Devers shaking things up in the backfield. Deke's had a couple big hits today, Don, and Corey Stringer out there. I think he's seen enough of little Deke. I shouldn't say little, but <laughs> <laughs> you could call him that. I'm no, 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 no. 245 pounds, but great quickness off the line of scrimmage. Steve Hoffman and his troops lining up now on second down and 10. Hoying first down, down to the 33 yard line. And that is where again Terry Glenn, the backup flanker, makes the reception. Young man supposed to possess blazing speed as well. Cooper's done a nice job of bringing speed into the Ohio State program, something he brought with him from Arizona State. First and 10 from the 33. Clock becoming Ohio State's biggest foe now. And they go from the shotgun. Chambers flushes out the quarterback, throws. There's the interception by Russell Hairston, one of the leaders of interceptions for this Husky team last year. Gets his first of the 1994 season. Russell with, I believe, four picks last season, along with David Kilpatrick. 
Great coverage out there. Bobby Hoying, I'm sure, would like to have that throw back. No chance of getting that in there over Russell. Well, and Washington right now can just backpedal and keep looking for uh, the pass because that's all they can do. But right now they've got the ball. And the scoring line take away that first quarter and got a real struggle. <laughs> yes, that's true. But they played well. They jumped all over Ohio State, taking advantage of turnovers and great execution on the part of the offense. First and ten on their own team. Leon carries up to the 13, maybe the 14-yard line. Craig Powell the t with a tackle. We've got to credit our defense, Don, for all Very the great job so. down there. Three possessions and not coming away with any scores. Tremendous goal line stand. A lot of heart shown by the defense today. Hoffman returns to the game as Neal heads back to the sideline. We've seen the emergence of Richard Thomas today carrying the ball on a couple of occasions. Had a 10-yarder. Michigan knocking off Notre Dame. 26-24. Must have been a terrific game. Two of my most favorite schools. <laughs> <laughs> and you said that with a straight face. <laughs> Second down at six. Hoffman. And headed out of bounds by Sean Springs, number 24. He showed some good speed, too. Here it is with three and a half minutes to go, and Kaufman still with the, the spurt as if it were the first quarter. He's going to pay the price every week, though, Sonny. He's going to get pounded. Last week, this week, he's taken himself out of the ball games a couple of times, whether it's been winded or just having tough shots hit on him. But, you know, you're going to get that. No matter what they say or how strong he is, he still, it still hurts. That's right. <laughs> they need to stay in bounds, however, now. Let that clock run. That's a good point. Third down and three. They get it up to the 20. They buy another three downs. Kaufman and it gets all plugged up in the backfield. That was an ugly play to begin with. Yeah, Belisari and Powell were there and one of the defensive linemen. Also Vrabel, but you're right. It was jammed up from the beginning and I think Napoleon realizes he may have done something he wasn't supposed to total yards his rushing yards that matches a career high cutting is Jeff Print. so there is 253 remaining in the ball game Huskies need to hold on and let the clock run out Numbers for Damon Hewitt unofficially 12 of 20 today 132 yards and a touchdown. They've done it mostly on the ground you look at it rushing for the Huskies 241 yards today. No secret who's got all of those <laughs> except for 10 maybe for Richard Thomas. <laughs> He's something special first and 10. Riding across the middle it gets to Tillman for the first down at the 36 yard line. Big time hit. Steve Hoffman said hello Bobby. <laughs> Hit Bobby Hoying, the quarterback. And Ohio State going as quickly as they can now. No huddle with 246 to go. They need three scores. They could have two touchdowns and two two-point conversions and still be a point shy of Washington. Sanders. But makes the mistake. Well, they will stop the clock with another first down. They're down to the 18 already. Huskies need to shape up here at the end. I don't think they want to give them another touchdown. Looks better on the scoreboard. We're giving them a lot of room. Of course, we don't want them to beat us deep, but uh, you know, to give them <laughs> underneath, but 10, 12 yard cushions is <laughs> that's, a lot. That's, <laughs> they're going to score in a hurry here. Yeah. A little too much room. Incomplete. Oh, lawyer. Lord. Boy, did he close quick on that pass. It looked to me like he was going to be wide open for a touchdown, and Lawyer came up with a big-time knockdown. Let's see what the flag's all about. Holding on Ohio State. 2.23 to go. 
On to Miami. Huskies will need a rest. I believe Miami has a bye next week, too. I could be wrong with that. Holding. Offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Still first down. They do have a bye. So, Erickson and Lambright with two weeks to get ready. Now the Ohio State and Pace, true freshmen, getting called on the hold. You know, and that could be bad, too. you got two weeks. You already started your season. Big game against Miami and all the hype and the hoopla. The time you get down there, <laughs> you know, it's anachromatic sometimes. Team will go down on Thursday as well, not on Friday. One of the backup players carrying down to the 28-yard line is number 37, Nikki Suwalu. Check that. Suwalua out of Santa Ana, California. A backup behind Rodriguez at fullback. Plays very seldom. It's amazing. Cooper has only two fullbacks on scholarship. Suwalua and Rodriguez. Going deep. Great coverage by Russell Hairston. All over Glenn. That ball appeared to be up there forever. <laughs> Didn't it though? <laughs> Russell was thinking the same thing. Got a player down, a Ohio State Buckeye right in the shade. Big Corey. Might be Here's a throw from Bobby, Don. Look at that thing. Hanging up there. Give Russell a chance to get back to where the intended receiver was. Wasn't even inbound. Of course, that's where you want it to go as a quarterback. And let's see, we have a flag in the backfield as well, plus the injury. Well, Corey, Big Corey did not want to come out of the ball game. He told the trainers to get off the field. I'm staying. Hairston too close. Didn't see it. Could have been on this side of the field. So that will move the ball. Washington has the win. But you'd like to see him keep that spread, that point spread, as wide as possible. When you're not playing for a bowl game, you can play for national prestige and ranking. As Stringer has to come out after being hurt. Big man, very, very big, <laughs> and he's only a junior. First and ten from actually yes. Now they change the scoreboard to the 13. Going right in the middle. They're going to call it. Yep. Yes, touchdown. Complete to Till Tillman. Buster Tillman with six and gets past Lamar Lyons. He was wide open all the way. Good throw by Bobby Hoyne. Buster. Buster's had a busy day without Galloway around. Had 15 receptions all last year. He has nine today. Good afternoon. Going to go for two here, Don. And we'll see an onside kick, I'm sure. They'd still need yet another touchdown and a two point conversion and then a field goal. Minute 43 to go here in the ballgame. Ohio State will go for two. As they go for two, Sanders in motion. A lot of time got a man wide open, and that is Dwayne Carter, and he's got it. So it is 25 to 16. A minute 43 to go. Timeouts remaining. Buckeyes have two, and Washington with a full complement of three. Don't go away just yet. Strange things can happen in this game. You know, two onside kicks. We've seen it before. Uh, hopefully, it won't happen. We brought. I'm sure we prepared for the onside kick. You, sh you do something like that every week in practice, Don. You always practice for fake field goals. Onside kick, so hopefully we're prepared for this. See, they went 48 yards in a minute 10. Can't be quite that preventive in terms no, of a prevent no. defense. Give them way too much yardage. 110, and they go five plays, 48 yards. And you'll see all your receivers now coming in on the kickoff return team. Casada, number five, young man, we haven't really gotten to talk about. He's a no. backup receiver who Set a junior college record last year with 95 receptions at 13 in one game in a bowl game at junior college last year at Los Medanos Junior College down in California. All the hands people are in. Yep. Bruners out there. Rashawn Sheehy will be back. 
Leon Neal, Cam Kissel, one of the backup fullbacks, Ernie Conwell, tight end. Casada, we talked about. Well, there's a 13 out there. Now that would be Ted, Ted Stark. Stark, quarterback, even. Anybody who's got hands, Janowski is right in the middle. Eric Bjornson. Mike Mathis will kick off. And we wait. <laughs> and we and wait. wait. <laughs> and we wait. Are there any good ones lately, Sunday? Yeah, the suspense is getting to me. <laughs> oh, that's why we love ABC games. Everybody gets to stare at each other. Great day for Kaufman, though. He became the number one all time, all purpose ground gainer in Washington history. As we mentioned, Richard Thomas, number 30, establishing himself now as a ball carrier. And here we go. Malfit, the kicker. With some 48 yard drive and five plays. Everybody up. Ohio State time of possession, one minute and 10 seconds. And we wait for ABC and the Huskies. Ohio State Ohio has come State up with the ball. ball. We apologize, but ABC missed that and we're using their cameras. And that's why we were unable to see it. As John number 47, Rager. Dennis Mogg, comes up with it. Getting the ball. Boy, what a Ohio tremendous State bounce. That's exactly the way you want to draw it up for an onside kick. Get the great height. Mike Reed with the stop. Mike Reed 36 may have come should have come up a little bit quicker than he did. Minute 41 to go. It is 25 to 16. Now the defense can't play up or rather preventative. Don't want to give up the big one but you've got to start being a little more competitive. That's exactly right. Got to be able to come up and put a little pressure on Bobby. People up front have got to put some heat on. Boying. Going deep. Two Huskies back there. And incomplete as Sanders had lots of company. Russell Hairston and Lawyer Malloy. Bounced off his helmet. Good defense. It was really the pass interference on the Huskies that gave them half the distance to the goal, gave the Buckeyes half the distance to the goal. And boom, they get the touchdown. And I wasn't really sure if it was Russell Hairston. No. Yeah, I'm not insinuating that either. You're right. It could have been anywhere back there. But that's what gave Cooper the great field position to get that quick touchdown. Been a strange game in that way, hasn't it? Yeah, a lot of bad calls. I shouldn't say bad calls, but calls favoring our team or their team. It's uh, been about even, though. Second and ten. Tight end. Look out. DJ Jones down to the ten as Reggie Reeser went for the interception or the deflection. And all of a sudden, it's first and goal with a minute 24 to go. I don't understand how a tight end can get that open when you're back there playing tough pass defense. You know they're going to throw the ball. Here comes Bobby Hoing. Not too much pressure. I'm just standing back there throwing the ball at ease. See, Reggie went for the pick or the deflection. Two receivers to the right side. Across the middle. Tillman, the intended receiver. He got away from Malloy and Lyon. Bad throw by Bobby Hoying that time. Tillman was open. You could tell by he did that little dance. He was, he was ready for six points. Huskies have rolled the string about as far as they can with a minute 12 to go. Great clock management by Ohio State. Great onside there. kick. It's right. Second and goal from the nine. Here comes the blitz. Oh boy, a volleyball game. Tillman again, the intended receiver, with three defenders around him. Good job by Lamar Lyons. And some heat on the quarterback that time. Finally got some heat on him, forced the ball out of there. Lamar, Lawyer, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> Even had a header. Wow. Third and goal from the nine. Tillman is one of Hoing's receivers in there. Also Terry Glenn. Tillman goes wide right. Sanders left along with Glenn. From the shotgun. Trying to go in the corner. No flag. Very good defense. Lamar Lyons doing the job. 
fourth down Sonny with 59 seconds to go. <laughs> it's been a, a, a long three minutes. I got to hold on to Sonny. He's going to jump out of this press box pretty soon unless they get this game over with. Cooper doing a great job of stringing it out. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's no. a long jump, Sonny. Don't no do it. <laughs> long jump. Fourth down. This is it. Got, Got him. him. Down he goes at the 19. Game set match. Hoffman on the kill along with Deke Devers. Here's a good pressure. See Deke coming in on the outside. I think it's Steve Hoffman gets there first. Yep. Deke coming back in. Kill Patrick to help out. Steve Hoffman with an amazing game today. Great so. rush on that play, Don, and just when we needed it. We didn't need any more offside, onside kicks. <laughs> pooch kicks, whatever That's you want pooch to call kick. It. I created a new term for kickoffs today, pooch kick. I know you use that for punting, but it, it works for kickoffs, too. <laughs> a pooch onside kick. First unit, obviously, still in there. First and ten as they give to Richard Thomas. Two timeouts Richard left for Ohio State, the and there is one of them right there. The so the Buckeyes down to their last T.O. Randall Brown made that tackle. Haven't said his name very many times today, Sonny, and he's no, one of the returning starters. Matt, Matt Bonehouse, Bonehouse has been in there playing most of the ball game. That he has. Well, Coach Lambright must feel pretty good, though, or will when this is over with as he avenges the first loss as a head coach that he suffered last year with a victory. And it'll be interesting to see how the polls are affected with Washington getting a victory here. They fell only two notches after the loss to USC in Los Angeles. They were 25th this week. So they should move up. Another interesting point about the Pac-10 itself is you've got eight of the top 12 positions for the toughest schedules and the top four belong to Pac-10 schools. One, two, three, and four. Michigan in there at fifth. And you have eight schools in there covering the top 12. So. Boy. <laughs> Man, that says a lot about the parity of the Pac-10, that they have to play each other. And that shows a lot of respect. And that's by computer, not those subjective writers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty amazing. This is a tough part of the ball game. You just want to, hey, it's over with. Let's hurry up. Don't call the timeout. Let's just get in the in the locker room, celebrate the victory. You know, go and take a shower and get on out of here. Uh, Ohio State, of course, you've got to take the timeout, but it's not going to do it much good. Washington, when they got into the red zone against SC, they were two of two. They got a touchdown and a field goal last week. We'll have to get the numbers on this one, but they. Did it when they had to here in the first quarter anyway, or in that first quarter where they scored 19 of their 25 points. You know, even with uh, Napoleon's explosiveness and his great speed, there's the guys right there. You're looking at him that really helped him out today. All those linemen up there, they don't get much uh, much attention or accolade, but boy, they're the re they're the reason he's able to run for 200 yards. And Lorenzo Styles, number 90, has played an exceptional game. We will have to sit out one more timeout, I'm sure. Yeah, Richard Thomas went out hard as the lead block for Kaufman. Still very little, if any, gain. And that is the last timeout now called by Ohio State with 42 seconds remaining. Huskies will look at a third down and nine situation. With those 42 seconds left on the old clock. Well, for the Huskies. They hit at the 942 mark in the first quarter as you see Styles talking it over with the defensive coaches. A 38 yard run by Napoleon gave them a 7 0 lead. And then just four minutes later, a one yard dive by Richard Thomas, which capped a 48 yard drive. They went for two, failed. It was 13 to nothing. Still in the first quarter, five <laughs> minutes to go, only 13 seconds later. That was after the fumble recovery uh, from Eddie George by, actually, was knocked loose by. Uh, Richie Chambers 
25 yard pass play very first play from scrimmage after the turnover to Eric Bjornsson for the touchdown they go for two again and fail it's 19 to nothing then in the second quarter 950 to go 44 yard field goal by John Wales a four play drive made it 22 to nothing in half when Napoleon Kaufman already had 144 yards and intermission from then on 22 to 8 on the touchdown by Ohio State and then a 22 yard field goal by John Wales and that's where we're at with 42 seconds left Kaufman trying to get those nine yards can't do it 36 seconds to go 34 and just kind of wait and see what the play clock will show it has not started yet 25 on the game clock and it looks like that's going to do it. Ball game's over. Yep. Game is over. They do not start the play clock. The Huskies have done it. They have themselves a victory over a very highly respected Ohio State football team, co champs in the Big Ten last year. A team that won 10, 1, and 1. Got to be proud of that defense and the O line today, Don. Tremendous job, as well as Napoleon. Kaufman finishes with a career high 211 yards. On 32 carries, knocking out his old record of 208 against California, Jim Lambright evens the record at one and one for this year. They'll take a week to get healthy again and then prepare for those Miami Hurricanes down in the southeast. Back with a final comment right after this.